edition books and can currently be seen on Twitch's Dungeon Scrawlers channel, where he and then the entire cast is comprised of authors and writers. Welcome, Eric Scott to be. Thank All you. right, guys. I am sorry I am trying to be helping, but. What happened to Trinia? <laughs> she just disappeared. I did. We lost the kid. I am, I am not understanding. She just got hit by one of those rays and she disappeared. She has gone. And Arabella said I turned to stone? You were a statue. Welcome back. <laughs> you know what? I just give him a hug. A big chalky okay. hug. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the time! <laughs> I'm like the Oprah of action economies. <laughs> Body. Already present in the room where you ultimately fought the kind of shade of Scaravingian. That, um... I think it was... <laughs> Your cat jumped up on the table with a sock in his mouth. Or her mouth that was walking across the table yeah. with a sock in their mouth. She there is a there is a pair of it's a if it's a home game situation and let's yeah. say you've gone into it thinking, I've got a really cool idea for a horror one shot and I'm yeah. running it and the players are just making jokes and things, then this comes back to my number one rule whenever anybody pops into anything that I'm doing, streams or whatnot, and they say, Do you get any advice for new players? I say four words. And anybody who's from my community who's in chat <laughs> will repeat them with me now. Talk to your players. Conversation is key. You've got to have that discussion. You could it, there is nothing to stop you pausing the game and saying, Hey guys. I'm trying to create an ambience of of, uh, of horror here. I've I've worked really hard at it. I've turned the lights down and put candles on and stuff. And I'm really I'm, I'm trying. I feel like these like silly names for the that you're like coming up with silly nicknames for the bad guy and stuff. It's really undermining me. Can we please try and keep this on genre, and then go back into it? And your players, unless they're dickheads, will go. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. We were we were fucking around a bit much. Yeah. All right, Majenko flies over. Love Racer, I've got you! Can he do a flyby heal? Sure. Get out, get out! No! Sure, he'll go right there. Tell me you at least washed your hands before you picked that up, right? What? Well, why, 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 what? No, I, I uh, no, dude, it's what she, uh, she gave it to me at the end for paying that extra fee that she has. Wait, she? And I kind of look back into the. Yeah, and you look over and you see that there's like, like four outhouses next to each other. Nick, you were you were getting some 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 outhouse uh, outhouse, outhouse strange, were you? I mean, no, I that's, guess there weren't. There wasn't, I guess there was cheese, cheese man, cheese man. No, yeah, yeah. There wasn't guys. There cheese. wasn't a there was a tent here. There was a fortune teller tent right here. Um, no, nope, pretty much. Make, looks like everybody can me. make perception checks. <laughs> it's a poop knife. <laughs> Thank you, lyric. <laughs> <laughs> Glad y'all came to our hoot, Nanny. Good to see you, boss. How you, you enjoying yourself so far? Hey. Get her another ale on me. No, get her two ales on me. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. The croaky bartender I comes back and drinking. sets two mugs. I... 
but your characters don't know that. So behave as though you don't, your characters don't know, but you players do. Um, so I can be like very like, ha, oh, imminent danger. What are you going to do? A bucket full of puppies. Um, but like the players know that I'm not actually trying to like traumatize them. Uh. Yeah. It's D and D. Really <laughs> far away from apparently. And switch our map. Oh. Say hello to the Forgotten Realms. Well, some of it at least. Uh, a, oh, it is. A, oh, it's it's yeah, all it, of it. It's Holy the whole effing thing. Well, it's the whole this whole part of the continent. Yeah. yeah, it's the whole part of the continent. Yeah. It is Toivo's turn. Toivo appears, closes his eyes as you explain what's going on, turns its head to look at, or to its head so it's facing the, the Hound of Tindalos. Um, so Matt and Brian, you hear the cat just growl real low and dangerous. Nick, you hear, meow, meow, I can smell you, meow, meow, meow. Mm. Roll your attacks. <laughs> Blink dogs are like, we don't want to kill the we don't want to kill the doggos. Like they're they're doggos. Oh, they're so adorable. And I'm like, all right, so we're gonna call it the ethically sourced blink dog cloak. And so basically <laughs> they were they were they were do blink dogs that when they died of old age, they donated their bodies to the uh, the, the magic item industry such that their their skins could then be turned into a blink dog cloak which would give the barbarian misty step three times a day as someone My who's had to like boy. brush a husky i feel like you could definitely make a whole cloak just out of like the fur, the fur yeah <laughs> that they shed yeah. oh is it a blink dog there we go look you just appeared wow. out of nowhere <laughs> oh, oh, hi, man. hi honey <laughs> like I heard someone say dog. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it, it almost bears like an Osiriani um, style to it. There's a veil over her face. She wears a, a shawl um, that is uh, kind of embossed with different jewels at the end of it. She wears long, beautiful, flowing robes of the finest silk. Um, very elegantly dressed. Doesn't look like it on our hand. side. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that prepared. <laughs> he is going to. Oh, he can. He's going to unload one of his most powerful spells at all of you. Fuck. Magic missile. <laughs> <laughs> Kill. And the boots of teleportation. Mm -hmm. so you can be your own delivery service. There you go. Wow, I, I mean, like I don't. It. Unless N Naveen, you want it. Sorry. No, it can go to Delabar. That's okay. This is this divvying up is not how I expected it to go. <laughs> I don't know. Like. They are about to start day two of the three-day doomsday counter. It is about 1 a.m., maybe a little bit later, earlier, in the Mushfens, a swampy frontier lens where this hidden relic is located. They've freed giant kraken-like octopi First of all, we have the father of Forgotten Realms. He's written source material for multiple RPG systems and most recently has been working with the fate of the Norns at Cleath Living City. Please welcome Ed Greenwood to the Game Master's Workshop. Hi, Ed. Hi. Next, we have Chris Jackson. He's known for his many series of pirate and sailing novels, including his most recent book in the five-fold universe, Pacifica, 
He has written multiple writ, uh, multiple RPG tie-in novels, as well as contributed for books such as Paizo's Ships of the Inner Seas. Welcome, Chris Jackson, to the show. Oh. And also author, writer, game designer. He has multiple RPG tie-ins as well, and has had a major hand in multiple fourth edition books, and can currently be seen on Twitch's Dungeon Scrawlers channel, where he and then the entire cast is comprised of authors and writers. Welcome, Eric Scott to be. Thank All you. right, guys. I am sorry I am trying to be helping, but... What happened to Trinia? <laughs> she just disappeared. I did... Uh, we lost the kid. I am, I am not understanding. She just got hit by one of those rays and she disappeared. She has gone. And Arabella said I turned to stone? You were a statue. Must come back. <laughs> you know what? I just give him a hug. A big okay. chalky hug. <laughs> okay. This is not the time! <laughs> I'm like the Oprah of action economies. <laughs> already present in the room where you ultimately fought the kind of shade of Scaravingian. That, um... I think it was... <laughs> Your cat jumped up on the table with a sock in his mouth. Or her mouth and was walking across the table yep. with a sock in their mouth. She... There is a, there is a pair of... It's a, if it's a home game situation and let's yeah. say you've gone into it thinking I've got a really cool idea for a horror one shot and I'm yeah. running it and the players are just making jokes and things then this comes back to my number one rule whenever anybody pops into anything that I'm doing streams or whatnot and they say do you get any advice for new players I say four words and anybody who's from my community who's in chat <laughs> will repeat them with me now talk to your players conversation is key you've got to have that discussion you could it, there is nothing to stop you pausing the game and saying hey guys I'm See some off the pod here. Enjoy some great alerts. We'll have a grand old time here watching Epic Rounds tonight. We love it when we come here. We clip all of the screens. The chat gets kind of trolly on Epic Rounds things. But that's an awesome part of the Epic family. So let's enjoy the show now and start another high train. We'll see the spicy chips fly on the rosacea. Hello, everybody. Welcome on in to the old school three campaign. How are you all doing? Welcome on in. I am joined by the amazing Matt, the formidable Brian, and the uniquely certified for GMing in the world of GMing known as Andrew. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't, I was going to come up with something and I just fell flat. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. I felt like you, you really led up with Matt and Brian. And then I was like, and then there's the, and then, there's this guy. <laughs> and then you just took a shit. And, I just took yeah. a and that's why we TPK. That's why yep. we TPK. No, that's it's why it happens tonight. We TPK because somebody probably didn't go and get those spicy Chat chips. Redeems a heel. Them. Oh, Brian gets a heal. <laughs> Do you have any spicy chips to heal yourself with? No, I, I have to just roll actually, the basics. Thank you, Curly Girl. Because he's going to need it. He's going to need I'm it. I'm actually guys. honoring again Brian if he wants to do shots in place of chips. He's that's, welcome to. That's which true. is probably more punishing overall. It depends on what it is. If it's like a shot of rum chata, then you might as well be drinking milk, yeah, I guess. So. No, no, no. I, I don't have I any mean, rum chata. But if you have four ranchadas ten times throughout this with how badly I'm going to beat you up, then Epic even Rose that's going to get you eventually. It is. When you drink a whole bottle. Eventually. I, and if it doesn't get I you drunk, just, it at least gives you, gives you gut rot. 
Oh, yeah. I would have to say a shot of milk would be way worse than a hot chip for me. <laughs> That's yeah. true. No, it would be way worse for your wife than it would be for you. <laughs> Only after, like, for the first two, but after that, that will mess me up real bad, too. I suppose. I suppose. But welcome on. Like, in, I would everybody. be taking a day off of work. There you go. Uh, Toasty Toesies is officially first. That's We all know that that's the thing here now. Uh, that Whoever gets it, no matter when you get it, you are officially first when you redeem it. So Toasty Toesies officially first. Um, and I think technically first too. Technically first and officially first. So welcome on in. Roll on a halo. Supernatural Rider. I did a work along with Supernatural Rider today. It was a lot of fun. I got a lot of stuff done. If you've had a chance. Oh. Brian and I having a shot for his heal. That's one that, that increases real shot at too. one. So you're now at two dice six with two die eight. <laughs> but yeah, I was doing a work along with Supernatural Rider. If any of you follow my YouTube, you will know that um, we've been adding stuff to there and I've been updating all of the images and they all have thumbnails now. So if you're not, you can go ahead and click that socials link and uh, the link tree will bring you all the way over to to the YouTube. You can follow me on YouTube, which we're live on YouTube right now as well. So uh, go ahead and do that. And you can see all the cool images. Old School 3 has a thumbnail. Uh, all of the podcast guests have a thumbnail. And some of the last handful of streams, live streams, have also had thumbnails. Those, those aren't necessarily the importance. But you can kind of get an idea of what I did on Supernatural's stream today while we were doing co-working. So go and check out Supernatural Writer if you, so, uh, if you have the chance. And while we're doing it, we'll do the... We'll do an official an official shout out. There's a linky shout out, so you can just go and click that little heart. Make it real easy for you all. Uh, ask Stephen the Shark how that works out. <laughs> how what works out? And you're welcome, Renfield, for the gift sub on Bentley's stream yesterday. Uh, you are very much welcome. But yeah, you flush it out. You flush it out. <laughs> I same anger in my head so where last we left off in this campaign this is the old school three campaign where we play character versions of ourselves that we have done multiple times in multiple other worlds and all of those worlds kind of tie in to this one and that is the quickest quick of the quickie quick of the overall synopsis of this world there is more to it uh but you don't need to know that all right now but what you do need to know is the recap that andrew is going to give us right now the players in this game themselves, in this isekai, that's the right term for it, right? Isekai story where you play yourself in a fantasy world. Yes. Just call it how Matt teaches people how to game. <laughs> how Matt I, I thought isekai was uh, like a form of animation, but you know, it's just the, it's like a spin off from anime. They entered into this world of Galarian after coming from the fire plane and they did not expect to arrive in a new fledgling country called the realm of the thunderborn where long story short they were tasked with rooting out a devious drug den that was causing people to disappear they were tasked by the chieftain of the the grand chieftain of the thunderborn friga a formidable barbarian woman who rules over a desolate landscape um and in such they have begun investigating and they have found that this thieves guild is far more than it actually seems with ties to supernatural creatures that spawn and threaten nearly the entire worldscape of galarian they entered into the mind of the village idiot a troubled man by the name of Burmese, who had somehow been here and knew the general layout of the area. Uh, they were placed in the Thieves' Guild and so found they, their way out from the nice. mindscape. Nice. And they now are working their way from outside in the real Thieves' get Den in. They also have to save a baby Triceratops that was apparently abducted and locate a suspect by the name of Tessa Kelrand, who has come up in their adventures before. As we pick up, they are currently inside the Thieves' Den. They have just fought a large 
alchemical guardian and they now find themselves facing another foe uh we are in initiative right now this is a little bit past the top of round three matt it is your turn <coughs> okay <clears throat> can I make a intelligence check on uh, this thing? So, I know that in the last adventure, um, Nick had come up to this doorway and he opened it and there was a save that he, um, there was a save he made that he made opening this door it appears closed but he recognized that it is actually open and you heard a voice on the other side but i don't believe you are able to see through the illusion yet or did we did we resolve that already um i the last thing is i rolled a 1d20 plus 11 is that your um, little save that's what I'm just, that is my will save. And it looks like okay. I spent a mythic point for plus three, so okay. 21. Okay, you are able to see it. And you do see this figure behind right. an anthropomorphic pig man. Man, when he becomes a werebear, I am not going to be surprised. Uh, you can roll on him. You can roll a Let's call it a local check. A you local. Notice? You can on your turns, but Matt, it is Matt's. When your turn comes back around, feel free to roll. Right. I'm, I'm just going to take my 10. So, plus, so I can take a 10. Hopefully, that gets me good enough. Uh, plus, my. Uh, 31. Okay. Uh, with a 31, you know that this creature is what is known as a manimal. What man which comes from? Okay. Yes. It is somewhere between human and animal. They are the... <laughs> Sorceress result of magic, what is essentially magical be bestiality. Oh, yeah, they are often mistaken for lycanthropes, but are in fact not lycanthropes. They have humanoid shape and intellect, they walk on two hands and have hands, two feet, and have hands that can manipulate tools. <clears throat> If they're like a chimp manimal, then they do walk on two hands as well. Are they kind of um, like always in that form? They are always in this form. Okay, yes. so they don't like like hybrid out or anything. They do not. <coughs> um, you know that they have, he has the manimal uh, traits. Um, well, you know that he is a monstrous humanoid. So yep. you get traits of that. And in addition to that, you get two things. Um, <clears throat> any DR? DR of fives overcome by silver. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Um, any uh, special attacks? I don't know why this is listed as a special attack, but it is. It is the ferocity monster ability, which that's not really a special attack to me. That would be more like a special defense, but yeah. essentially it is when he goes below zero hit points, he can keep acting as if staggered uh, okay. until he's dead. Um, How does Brian look bloodied? He looks more than bloodied. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I am uh, going to 
uh, cast because that's why I'm going to drop anything. I'm going to cast a Cure Moderate Wounds on you, Brian. Thank you. Um, nine. Nineteen. And my fast healing ticks up. And uh, I am going to move uh, to here. Because um, this way Toivo can get in and use its reach, hopefully, past Nick. Because right now I just I can't get to the bad guy. That is it for Tango and myself. Okay, after Matt, uh, this woman, this woman, this child, this halfling, one of the three, uh, is going to spend her turn to full withdrawal. You see she moves behind this table, Nick, you're right in the doorway. Okay. And she kind of like hides behind the table. Okay. I mean, I guess you could... She's going to hide from you, so you could roll a perception check. Um, does she have hide in plain sight? Well, she does have a table for cover. Okay. <laughs> Perception? Perception. But I do have low light, that low light vision, the brightest night thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nat, 34. You, you see her duck behind the table. You can kind of see that she has positioned herself behind one of the, the stout table legs. They're pretty, they're wide enough for her to hide behind. But you see her duck down, and you don't see evidence of her moving from that spot, so you know where she is. Can I make, like, a sense motive as to whether she is a, like, a non-combatant, or if she's, like, getting ready to maybe strike if something happens? Sure. Or she's like running away from this guy as opposed to us. You can. Not quite as good as before. 17, though, still. So, what you get uh, from her actions and her body language, she doesn't say anything, but you catch sight of her face when the illusion is pierced. Is there's a look of fear and uh, a, a twinge of panic in her eyes. And how she scurries away evokes a sense of self-preservation. Okay. That would be what you get with a, a 17. Sounds good. <clears throat> night Owl is next. It's the Night Owl. <clears throat> I've had people mention Night Owl about three times this week in chat, just like, it's the Night Owl. Night Owl. Night Owl might have to be a uh, returning NPC in the future. Take leadership. I mean, only if you give a hoot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Night Owl is going to move to there. Wait, who? Oh, actually. She's going to move to here. Chat redeems mythic point slash inspiration. There you go, Brian. Oh, That's for your you. give That's a hoot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Night Owl is going to cast a spell on himself. this one and that will end his turn after we tell night out, he on himself? you could roll spellcraft because it might be good to know in case we don't double up or nah, I got a 12 you're not sure what it is Uh, 
And it's the man bear pig's turn. Do you know what it is? Yep. What is it? Or I guess do you want to just shoot it to me in a message? Mm hmm I forgot I was on mute. And yeah, Toasty awesome. Toasties is calling this guy the man bear pig, FYI. He is the man bear pig. Man bear pig. He's not actually a bear, but he's kind of like, you know, a bear. <laughs> and he's a pig, and he's a man. So, man bear pig. There you go, chat. I mean, if, he, if he is gay and he's a big guy, then he would be a bear, right? I, yeah, so yeah. He could be a man bear pig in just the different terms of the phrases. He looks to you and surveys the room and you, you feel a twinge of magic spark off at the beginning of his turn. And he says, you all look quite tired. Why don't you? Sit down, take a load off, get some rest. And I need Nick, you, Brian, and Matt to and Tango to all roll will saves. <clears throat> Would this be considered versus Sonic? Whoa, it is suggestion. You do and you do need to hear the voice, so maybe. It is not. It, this is an enchantment compulsion mind affecting effect. All right. So probably not. So Toasty Toasty says apparently pigs have a corkscrew style phallus. Real glad that's in my search history now. Taking one for the team. <laughs> Thank you. I I think. <laughs> also no. Bad toesies. Bad toesies. Uh, I got a 26. Tango got the 11. Okay. 19, 26, 18, 11. The 11 is the only failure. 18 was the DC. Ho, 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 ho. So, Tango falls asleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rap, rap, rap. <laughs> it's like the fainting um, goat, but it's the fainting dinosaur. That was at the beginning of his turn. So the next thing he's going to do is he's going to five foot to here. And so would he know whether the spell worked now or does he have to wait till our turns? What's that? Does he would we would we fall asleep on our turns or would we fall asleep on his turn? His. Okay. So he, he, he would, would know he would that fall. it didn't work. Okay. Yeah, he would know that you're still conscious. Okay. Okay. The next thing he is gonna do is he is going to cast another spell. If you'd like, those who have line of sight to him can roll a spellcraft. I think that might only be Nick. I can see like a third of him. So I'm going to say you I can, can roll a spell. A bit of him. You can see him too? I, okay. I'm going to say, Matt, you can, anybody who can see him can roll, but those who don't have clear sight of him are going to have a more difficult uh, DC. <clears throat> Hello, Wino. Welcome on in. Yep. Uh, let's find something colorful. I don't like how that sounds. Something colorful. 33, so it's not going to matter how much I modify that, DC. You're going to know what it is. And 35, same for you. 19, I think, is also going to do it. Yep. Second level spell. So in this area, a euphoric cloud goes, expands. This fog bank of intoxicating multicolor hues. 
it suddenly becomes a rave in this room. I need everyone in the room to roll a will save. This is against a conjuration creation poison effect. Uh, those who made the save know that if you fail this save, you are going to be fascinated for as long as you're in the cloud. <clears throat> With Tango asleep, does he have to make the save? Uh, no. He's okay. unconscious. If he comes to consciousness, he will. If it's still there. It also does obscure vision as a fog cloud, so you can no longer see him. Uh, so... 26, 24, 23. And I need one for Night Owl. We'll need one for Toivo. Oh, need one for Toivo as well? Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Toivo with the will save. Um, And you said it's Owl. enchantment? It is enchant. Uh, no, it is not enchantment. It is a conjuration creation poison spell. Wow. So actually, uh, Night Owls is too lower than that. Poison will save. A poison will save. Yeah. 14. Okay. Uh, actually, he's got points. I'm gonna have him use a point because I think this is important for him. He's got two, two points for being a mythic companion. So we're gonna. I think he just gets one die six though. I'll bring it to a sixteen. Best I can do. Sixteen. <clears throat> Twenty six makes it. Twenty four makes it. Twenty three makes it. 20 makes it, which is what his would be. 16 fails. Toivo is fascinated for as long as he is in this cloud. Okay. And then for 1d4 plus 1 rounds after. Which means after the Swinomancer's turn, Toivo's <laughs> turn, he just kind of stands there and stares with his eyes right. dilating wildly. It makes sense for an animal. And he's still a wild animal, right? That puts us to round four. Brian, it is your turn. Nick, you are on deck with your animal, with the realization that maybe your animal is tripping now. <laughs> as as I feel it. I feel uh, it in my very so, soul. Yeah. This is the last round of haste. Uh, and then, um, or wait, I believe it's last round haste. Let me double check. Six of seven rounds. Yeah, so this would be seven of seven rounds. Was it seven rounds? Did I screw that up? Should that be nine rounds? Because I'm ninth level now? Should be nine rounds. Yeah. Okay, so then we're seven of nine for that. <laughs> I, must, I must have screwed that up. Thank you for the lurk, 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 lurk. I love that emote for Toivo. Yeah. Um, so I do we know is this a I guess from what uh, we rolled was this effect a spell or was it a you do know it is a spell that he casts you can see him making the motions of casting speaking the gibberish he took out a weird purple capped mushroom that has a corkscrew stem to it because toasty toesies and he throw it throw it into the room 
causing a cloud. I'm going to attempt to dispel magic. All right. I would like to use your reroll re thing to reroll. Okay. Much better. Much, uh, much better. 28 does not dispel. I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. It's gone. So Toivo is fascinated for an additional whole two rounds. And then as a swift action, I am going to, because uh, I think I was also running out on my Bardic song, I'm going to continue my Rage song. Do, do and, haste. Well, no, the haste is still up as well. The, the rage song is um I I have no idea I'm blanking on a rage song right now uh uh but it is it is angry it is angry opera that's what you're hearing let's start a riot let's you're hearing some Wagner riot. you're listening to some Wagner there you go and that's that's all I got. That's everything, because that was a swift and a move and an action. Thanks a lot, the maestro. <laughs> Nick, you yeah, now man. can see that your suspicions are confirmed that Voivo is just like... <laughs> all right. Um... Well, this guy is officially effing with us. I've already used my ray of heat on that other dude. Yar. Um, I am going to five foot step in towards him. And... <clears throat> You know what? Fuck it. We're hasted, right? You are. Just gonna full round. Cut yourself off a rump roast. Well, I mean, I don't have anyone flanking with me, so it's not gonna be as awesome as we had hoped. But <laughs> grab his dick and twist it. No, because then it'll just come right off Toasty. Um <laughs> 11, 11, 12, 13. That's it. Okay. X! No! Damn it. <laughs> A 21, 25, and an 18. 18 is the hasted. All of these hit. However, he has a magic spell on him that sort of smears his form as if he were an ink painting that got wet. You have a 20% mischance on all those attacks. Okay. Do you want to roll them or do you want me to roll them? You can roll them because it's 20%, so it's always 1, one through 20. That's a hit. That's a hit. And all hit. All right, roll damage. You want all the damage together? Do you bypass DR Silver? I, it is a... I believe it's still just a plus one weapon. It's basically and a I flame tongue right now. I don't believe that things, that so. does, right, Matt? Yeah. Okay. I you can roll it all together. I know it's three hits, so I'll just so you'll just minus off fifteen. I mean, I can just minus yeah. off fifteen or whatever. Yeah, you minus off whatever because I don't know what the number is. I just assume it's five because it's usually five. But all right, it's twenty. No, it's not twenty. <laughs> it's twenty. We're fucked. <laughs> And there's the my bonus strength damage again. Okay. 
38 damage. 13 of it is fire. If that matters. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, you did, deliver. I, did I crit on any, almost crit on any of those? No, I didn't. Tell. Just checking. I haven't critted with this weapon yet. You deliver a series of slashes at him with a uh, with your blade. You smell bacon, and he squeals in pain. And he says, "Morning, me. That wasn't very nice." And quit casting spells on us. That end your turn. Um, yeah, I'll be done. Matt. Waking, uh, uh, snapping <clears throat> somebody out of the fascinate is a standard action. Yep. Um, I will say, yeah, I'm gonna wait. Oh, uh, I'm gonna wake up Toivo as my standard. Okay. And then, um, <clears throat> I'm rolling ten d eight. This is for you, Andrew, to use for my trap spotter. Okay. So copy those, write them down, whatever. What are d eights for? Um, for I get to apply my inspiration to oh. my perception checks without spending an inspiration point. Okay. So it's basically, and you then, take a ten perception and then add those onto them. Yeah. So my take a ten is a thirty plus those d eights. And it's that's related to traps. Yep. Okay. And then I'm gonna go five. There's ten traps in this next room. You guys are in ten fifteen. Shit. What's for the rest of the game? Twenty. 25 because I can uh, move through Nick's square without provoking an attack of opportunity. <clears throat> and then Toivo will jump off my shoulder to here. Whoa, where did he go? He went on to the wrong square. Oh, oh, not Toivo, you're... <laughs> or Tango. I was like, oh um, my god, you're now carrying that... Tango on your shoulders? And now that Tango's in that square... I then continue my movement, so I'm flanking with Nick. Okay. Um, and... I mean, you're flanking with me no matter where you're at. Oh, yeah. 100% forgot about that. Yep. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. But that just okay. gives room for other people to come in and fight. Mm -hmm. mm. Puffin is next, and she is just going to stay hidden. She's not doing anything. She doesn't want to be have any part of this. Night Owl says, Vengeance, evildoer. And you see he moves to there and gathering some energy in his hand he throws a bolt of acid at the Swinomancer. And hits. Gets through blur. Seven damage. Uh, but you see the acid goes through. And his name is Night Owl, right? Yes. After Night Owl is the Swinomancer. Who... Five foot steps to here and says, 
You've got this all wrong. You're supposed to kiss the chef, not kill him. Let me cook you up a nice stew. He says as he slaps his hands together and spreads them out like he's pushing them against a flat surface. And you see in this space... Oh, that is not the right thing. This is from here to here to here. That. Twenty feet long level. Spellcraft to know what that is? Yes, you may roll spellcraft. It is a wall of fire. And it is radiating this direction and like this, like this, this, like this. So, Brian, you are now in an oven. Mm -hmm. um, as the wall appears, Everybody is within 10 feet of the hot zone. So that is... Six fire damage. Oh, um... Oops. Just as a reminder. I'll lock this so you can't accidentally open it. Thank you. Uh, I accidentally closed the other one. <laughs> I reopened oh, it. Oh, never mind. Our Enrage song, we get resistance 5 to acid and cold, not fire. Okay. Never mind. Andrew, could you do me a favor and subtract six hit points off of Tangle? I can't click his token because of the door. Curse you, token. I wish I could get it to default in the bottom right corner, because that's like never a problem. This is upper left one just always has things in the way. Thank you. I was going to say, you should just keep him, if he's with you, just don't have him in the thing until you need to move him somewhere else and just place him on the map then. Yeah, but I use him for, like, moving around things. Like having him hop off and use the teamwork feet to get by stuff. Yeah. Which is um, freaking tank, cool. Uh, Toivo is not, not damaged by this. Okay. I, his, that's he does not want to break his fascinate. Um, and that ends his turn. Did Mac break the fascinate on his turn? on uh, on his familiar? Yeah. Oh, on his familiar. I, oh, yeah. I woke Tango up. Yeah, you said Toivo when you said it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I got gotcha. you. So Toivo's eyes are still dilating. All right. It's okay. He wouldn't and move the fire anyhow. Brian, you are next. Okay, I don't like the burning. Yeah, and Brian, uh, you do know I, I do have ways of dealing with fire. Because I've done it before in the plane of fire. Dumb ways to die. And then the rage song is going to be... Is this the... Or no, there's... 
another round of two rounds of haste after this, isn't there? Or one more, I think. After this round, there will be one more one round more of haste. Um, I'm going to five foot step. So that's the halfling girl. Is this the piggy? This is the piggy. She's hidden. Uh, so you would have to roll a perception to notice her. Let's do this. Uh, the ninja mask fits completely over her face. Yeah, that, that got a good smile. I'm I'm not even going to. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to. So that was a five foot step. I'm going to try shooting the bugger. Because that seems like a thing to do. So first shot. Miss. Hasted shot. 22 touch. 23 touch, actually. Does a nat one misfire for your gun? Uh, that's a great question. Because it's a firearm. Know. I don't know. Typically for firearms, what kind of firearm is it? It is it is a legendary item, but it is not an artifact. So it's a still considered just a pistol. So it probably would. So pistols misfire on a one, which okay. would give your weapon the broken condition. Okay. Until I fix or repair it? Until you fix or repair it. And is it just a crafting check to do that then? Or is it a... Have you guys been using Misfire before for the firearms? Has it come um, up? It's happened a couple of times, but you uh, you have that one feat, Brian, that lets you... Gunsmithing? Yeah. Well, yeah. I have so... the amateur gunslinger feat. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's just if you, you don't want to roll another nat one. Before you can repair it. Yeah. Gotcha. And then the broken condition is what? A minus two to use it? Correct. Okay. So then the second shot. Um, so I forgot to add haste or no. I added haste, but I forgot to add point blank. So the so, 22 so when would have been a 23, a 21 to hit him with the second attack. Uh, that will hit. Um, and just for your information, the broken condition, it's a minus two on attack and damage rolls, and you crit now on a natural 20 only for times two. Gotcha. Uh, so that would be... Uh, let's see, seven, eight, so six magical bludgeoning, piercing, and two fire damage. Two, and I need to roll his mischance. So six and two. Okay. Uh, so you will want to keep track of what your misfire is now, because since it's broken, shooting it, it goes up by four. So a one through five. Okay. Uh, do you have gun training? Is that a feat? It's a class ability. I do not. I just um, have I just have the feat amateur gunslinger. All of us, because we come from the future timeline, have gun training okay so then it is only uh, increased by two which means that one through three is your new misfire okay then i'm gonna spend a uh, mythic point to give uh matt a decisive strike you can uh, attack adding my tier to the attack roll and bypassing all damage reduction so, and that's adding a plus four to hit. Um, 
swinging through the wall of fire? Is it like passing through the wall of fire? Yes. Awesome. I... Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Um... Thirty-four to hit. You definitely hit, uh, uh, except for blur, which you can roll that. Yep. Hit. Blur is as effective as it is in any game. Yep. So you go ahead and roll damage. I don't know. There have been a few times where Matt's used Blur on, in like a super high level game, and it's like, yeah, like, what is high level bad like, guys? Sometimes three, it works great. Yeah, plus three hundred to hit Blur. You miss. I just, I have never seen that before. I've seen that with displacement, but not Blur. It's happened to Rachel a couple times. She's been real salty on it. I love um, it when it happens to Adam, where he's like, "I do the oh, what's the the strike where you give up all strike. your attacks." What's that? 13 damage. Yeah, when vital strike. Yeah, when you're you, I vital strike blur. No. Do you bypass the silver? I do, for my sword is made out of mithril. Okay. So as you swing through the wall, you take 17 damage. Yep. Oh. Okay. But what does the bad guy take? What does the bad guy take? 13. 13. So I feel good, though, because I have fire resist of five. So I only took 12 and did 13. <laughs> That's a good exchange. Yep. So you're moving up in the world. I like it. Uh, he does look bloody. Brian, does that end your turn? Yeah, it's, that's all my hunk. All right, Nick. Nick. Puts his sword in the fire and activates its ability. And that is my dispel check to dispel the fire. It only works against fire spells or at natural fire. Well, this is a fire spell, so you see the fire dissipates. Oh, well, that guy's dead anyways. And that's a standard action for me. So I will move so that Brian doesn't get shooting coverage. I will move to there. Actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'll move. I can't move any further because that was in Brian's area. But we've pretty much got him covered. He's only got one. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to give him an attack of opportunity by moving to there. I've been waiting for this. You see he is holding in his hand a corkscrewed wooden baker's peel that he swings at you. This is one that will not detach. <laughs> there you go, Toasty. Just for you. Just for you, Toasty. Just for you. Cheers to Toasty Toasty and his search history. It doesn't, I mean, doesn't have a great hit. hit. It's not well, 21. 21, 21 hits you. He swings wildly. Because of, because of, it would because of Brian's rage song, it would have been a hit, but because of haste, it's not. So it's like a narrow. Yeah, it hits it close. Past, past it's close. by your nose. Yeah. All right. So you dispelled it. You moved. Does that end your turn? Yes. I mostly just wanted it so he didn't go towards her. You know, I didn't want us forcing him that direction. I'd rather him stay in between us, so that's why I did that. Matt? 
Um, so we are considered flanking because of your shared abilities correct. right now, correct? Correct. Okay. And that'll be a plus so then, to hit. as a swift action, uh, I study him. And then while we got haste, I am just going to do all four attacks. Or sorry, all three attacks. Um, is it a plus six bonus for you for flanking? Because no, of the feats? I believe it's a plus eight, but I'm double checking. Plus there. eight? Okay. Yeah, it's a plus eight. Oh, that's so crazy. 16. Uh, first attack. Hasted attack. I'm double checking for sure. Here. Second attack. These Not a all, single crit. These are all potential hits. Okay. Yeah, because flanking and then you take out oh, flank. Ooh, one damage. miss. One miss. Look at blur. Yeah. One for 12. Okay. Um, and since I have Mithril, um, you cool with me just rolling all my damage together? Yeah. Okay. And Bear Pig might, Blur might save his man Bear Dick. Brian, from your uh, Rage Song, do we do, oh, I can just scroll up. Never mind. I'll just scroll up. Okay. It's, there's no energy type associated with it yet. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it is a plus six. I'm, I was reading it wrong. Because I get yeah, flank, Matt, which is... I have... Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. It's flank, which is a two, and then I get an additional plus four for outflank, and then mythic outflank brings it to a plus... a plus six. Okay. So it's just a... Because outflank just a doesn't... Plus six. doesn't Yeah, it doesn't add plus four to the plus two. It just makes it... it you can it do it wherever. It makes it a plus four, and then mythic outflank okay. makes it a plus six. And with the with the rage song, we get sent the lesser celestial blood, which can bypass. We're considered good aligned for bypassing damage reduction and do an extra D six versus evil outsiders with a melee attack, and we get resistance five to acid and cold. Okay. Which makes me realize I should probably. And if we crit, that. everybody, if one of us crits, all of us get an attack. Yeah, we never crit. That's true. Oh, it's 11 damage less than that. I did my plus as if all three had hit, so it's 30 damage. Okay. Oh, he looks pretty hurt after that. Um, And then my fast healing ticks up, and I am done. Muffin stays hiding. I don't think Night Owl has a good view on him. I'm there, so he's going to go to right here. He threw his spear last game. Actually, he's going to go retrieve his spear. So move standard to pick it up, and that'll end his turn. Move in standard. The Swinomancer, Man Bear Pig, as he is called is going to five foot to here. And he says, well, <laughs> and you can see he kind of like slicks back some of the hair that's falling from underneath his ripped up chef's hat. And he's like slicking it back with blood that is just caking his face now. Says, I'd love to stay and uh, chew the fat, so to speak. <laughs> but I gotta run. And he starts casting a spell. Pistol weapon, Brian. Pistol weapon. He is casting defensively. Uh, I'm. Am I in melee with him? Because I can punch him. I have a gauntlet. He's casting defensively. He's casting defensively. Oh, I also can't well, then... see from the point of the cat. Well, then okay. screw that guy. Cat does not have vision. Uh, does the cat need light? Because it is dark. He's got low light vision naturally. Are you putting off light? I am. Am I? And I'm assuming the big fiery guy we killed is probably also 
there's, I'm guessing there's still flames coming from him, isn't there? He wasn't. He wasn't on fire. He was oh. just had like alch alch alchemical stuff in him. Gotcha. Um, he. Well, there's still light coming from the room, right? From you. Oh, okay. He makes the motion of casting a spell and does so successfully. If anybody like to spell craft, you can. Sure. 29. 27. 19. Uh, he is... Let's see. So Matt and Brian, you both recognize the spell he is casting. It is a teleport. He and he disappears. Toivo. Fascinated for the last round. Brian. Uh, okay. I will... I'll go ahead and step... I'll move into the room. Uh, how injured does Nick or Matt look? I am barely injured. I am also Sorry, did you say barely or fairly? Barely. Barely. And I am fast healing. And Nick, you are barely injured? I am barely. I'm not fast healing, but I'm not worried about it. You can also still hear the sound of screeching coming from the door next to you, to Matt. Panicked screeching. Yep, I'm going to. Uh, uh, so, I suppose I should probably specify first up. Uh, last round of haste. And. Uh, And this is the okay. Um, I am going to sorry, I'm going to cast a uh, cure moderate on myself. And I moved in, and I think that's going to be it for me. Nick? Uh, I turn to the girl, and I go, are you okay? Did he hurt you? Yeah, I'm doing all right. You're the girl? Uh, you didn't say I turned to the girl. I mean, you out of character said I turned to the girl and say, hey, but like, oh, yeah. Brian assumes you're talking to him. So, yeah. He, Good point. Good point. Yeah. He says, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. I just ignore him and I like, <laughs> and I like kneel down underneath the table so that she can see me. And I put the sword mm -hmm. like behind me or off to the side, not behind me. I don't want it to look like I'm like hiding a we big weapon behind me. But and I just say, Matt. He's gone. Matt, is there anything you'd like to do before we sort of drop from combat? Open the door. Okay, we will start stay the in, next combat. We will stay in combat. Go ahead and open the door. Oh shit! I'm going to give you a couple descriptions: one for the room that you're in, and another for the one that you see. So, in this room that you entered into, there's a large steel table. It's smeared with spills, stained with solution, and splattered with strange substances. Toasty, have fun with that. 
uh, and on another table within arm's reach, uh, another table within arm's reach is lined with spades, forks, rakes, and trowels. And then in the door you open, you see a chamber lined with storage shelves containing reagents, alchemical tools, and jarring supplies, and brewing materials. And you can hear something screeching within, and you immediately see what it is. Aww. It's a really nice picture. It is a panicking baby triceratops that has a chained collar that chains it to uh, the wall. Um, from where I am, can I... Uh, I'll try to make a handle animal to get it to calm down. Okay. Roll your handle animal. I actually have 11 ranks because someone in the party is running around with a wild animal. <laughs> wow. um, I want to spend an inspiration point to help with this. And I actually have to spend it because handle animal is not one of my normal. A uh, 23. Don't forget to take out the berries we got when we were looking for it earlier. I don't have an action to be able to do that because I opened the door. Oh, bummer. I would let you do that as a, if you wanted to as a part of your handle animal standard action. Okay, then yeah, I would uh, pull out the berries. Um, that will give you a like... plus two circumstance bonus. Okay, so a 25. Are these the fire berries? Yeah, the yeah. fire berries. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with a 25, this creature is currently under the panic condition, but okay. is chained to the wall, so all it can do is cower. It's screeching, it's screaming, it's like pulling against the wall. And with your animal, animal handling, you're not necessarily able to alleviate the panic condition, but it does quiet down to just a petrified shiver. And um and that's it just um, like stands there shaking. Uh I will uh move in. I'd like you to roll me a perception check. <laughs> Toasty toesies. If it's versus a trap, it's an additional four. <laughs> okay. You are in this room, and as you enter, you notice something off. Um, in fact, Brian and Nick and Night Owl can also roll perception checks for this as well. That's my French version of perception, 32. I need to do a French version of perception more often. Perception. I find I do a horrible French accent. Wow. Well, hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> I like the hamburger. Hamburger. Yeah, like I, I do so, a horrible French accent. Anyone who beats a 20 will notice what I am about to describe. Bum, 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 bum. Is you see suddenly apparating around you, around all of you, what looks like people, townsfolk, but they're spectral in nature 
and they are very apparently dead, covered in fungal growths, rotting mushrooms, necrotic mushrooms splayed across their flesh, their eyes staring vacantly at you with malice. And they just form around all of you in this circle. Acknowledged, like, is this a haunt? Yeah, is this a or... haunt? That's the first thing I was thinking. Uh, you can roll a religion mat because it is your turn. I I I see your lips moving but I can't hear anything. I don't know if you're talking to yourself or to us. Uh, you you identify this haunt as a haunt okay that is triggered by proximity which means it was likely already active when nimbus was in here and has mm -hmm. just been in perpetuity triggering on him that's terrible it's really mean. Yeah. Um, the, I'm guessing since you identified it, you know what what all it does. Um, it, it has a thirty foot radius, so it's going to hit both rooms, mm -hmm. and it creates these spirits that are consumed by hatred mm -hmm. regiments of spectral kelid folk with decayed flesh covered in rotting fungus and plant matter when the haunt goes they will charge at you uh, and though they can't physically affect you anybody who succumbs to their spectral strikes are going to be affected by an eye bite spell okay um, by identifying it, is it like most haunts where it is only positive energy that can disperse it, or can this one be affected by other things? It is as your typical haunt. As your typical haunt. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can, and this is me asking because I don't remember from looking up, can they also be affected by like ghost touch? And just like striking them down. Uh, I don't believe that ghost touch okay. affects them as they're, it's an area. So you need to be able to okay. channel into the whole haunt. A uh, channel or like uh, channel or channel like pure. positive energy yeah. in some, some manner. Um, I am going to uh, spend a mythic point to get an extra standard act. Oh, I, but I can't use it to attack. Or I can't use it to cast the spell. That's correct. Um, hold on. Da, 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 da. Do I have anything else? I'm, I'm going to let everyone know that it's a haunt. Okay. Um, you also let us know what it's going to do to us? Yeah, it's going to eye bite us and might. Well, it's what's panicking the the dinosaur. Um, and unfortunately, that is all that I can do because I can't cast another spell. 
Muffin is next. She looks at you, Nick, and says, thank you for driving him off. And then she looks around and sees all these undead. And it looks like she notices that as well. Brian seems oblivious to it. Um, but she looks around, seems afraid, and she starts to run. Did she? But she hears what Matt said as well, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you uh, want to do anything, or I guess the only thing you I can do, do is she provo like... she provokes from you if you want to attack her. Where would she run to? I can't grapple on a. Not unless you have the grab monster ability. I don't. So, and I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to attack her. So, you see, she runs. Um, <laughs> she runs until she sees the giant cat and goes, "Oh, fuck no." <laughs> She runs until she sees a very stern bat owl person. Mm. And uh, she runs and she runs, boom, right into him. And he just looks down and says, where are you going? We haven't crossed you off our suspect list yet. And she's just like, I... And uh... <laughs> That's kind of both of their turns. Uh, Night Owl, I guess he could try to do something to elim eliminate this haunt, but he really doesn't have anything. 5, 10, 15, 20. Did you say the area it was? I said it was going to affect the rooms. He could just go to here, I guess, if he thinks that that might save him. And Toivo is no longer fascinated. Um, he will probably blink and realize that everything has changed. Uh, and will probably just wait because he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. He's got scent and he knows which direction we are, but if he can't see. Although he does have Blackest Night as well that Matt gave a buff to, so... Yeah, so he might... That's low-light vision, isn't it? It increases, it doubles his range for low-light vision if he already has it. Let's see what your low-light is. Yeah, so I have it... Yeah, if you can't see, it's because the light isn't reaching him. Okay. But it says you have vision for him, and the low light distance is doubled. That's interesting, because, yeah, even if I move him right there, he still can't see. He can only see from... I can only see from Nick's point of view. Oh. Let's try this. Maybe don't How about now. Nope. I don't know. Maybe I'll refresh. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, he has vision. His vision is turned on, so I don't know what it would be. Um, but at the end of the round, um, the haunt does activate. Oh, so I don't even get a chance to do anything. Nope, because it triggered halfway through the round, and it goes at an initiative 10. Uh, that is going to be will saves. This doesn't happen to be another poison will save, does it? It is not. Dang it. It is a necromancy emotion pain effect. I want more poison will saves. Wow. 
Wow. Okay, 25, 25, 24. Okay. Muffin. Makes it. <laughs> Good. And Night Owl. Ugh. Man, we're dead, Jim. We're all dead. Night Owl fails. That's not good for him. We'll get to that on his turn. Brian. Hey, I'm going to uh, just offer my hand to the kid or the halfling child or, or the girl. Mm -hmm. As far as I can tell, because chat redeems mythic point slash inspiration. Night Owl, get some inspiration. What is our, <laughs> well, what is the, is it just the base DC for them? Yeah. He makes Moko. it. <laughs> Moko oh. with the Raiders. Hello, Raiders. Oh. Welcome in, my friend. How are you doing? How is everything going? Oh my god. Oh, that shout out right there. Watch out for that sniper. Oh, boom. Oh, she got me down. Oh, I'm getting shot at from somewhere else, too. Moko is playing some Helldivers today. Welcome on in. How are you guys doing? Welcome in. Our Raiders, we're doing some tabletop role playing. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Nane, the artist. Welcome on in. Pikachu, welcome on in. Hello, everybody. Some of you know me. I'm in the bottom corner down here. Well, welcome on in. Some of you know me from uh, hanging out with Moko, doing Skull and Bones, and chatting in the chat. So uh, hopefully you guys are all doing well. Thank you so much for the raid. Moko, I appreciate you so much. Uh, I, I hope you had a good stream. I hope you had fun. And I uh, saw you were doing some Helldivers. I was hanging out earlier today and lurking. So uh, I hope I hope everything went well. I hope you're doing awesome and everything is going great. Uh, how are you enjoying the game? How is everybody else enjoying the game? And welcome on in. My name is Nick. Uh, like I said, I'm in the bottom bottom left-hand corner down here. Uh, I'm the host of Epic Realms. Today is tabletop role-playing night. Every Wednesday is tabletop role-playing. Uh, I do all kinds of stuff. We do podcast interviews and chatting shows on Mondays. And then uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are usually video games of some sort. We've been doing a lot of Skull and Bones. I think tomorrow I'm doing Dead by Daylight. Skull and Bones will be back on Friday. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. Feel free to stick around, hit refresh if you want. And uh, yeah, hang out for the story. We're playing Pathfinder First Edition is the system. And uh, we're all playing characters that are kind of playing ourselves, And we're kind of in a dungeon crawl and a hot just went off. And uh, we're about to find out exactly what bad stuff happens to me because I failed my saving throw. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. And again, Moko, thank you so much for the raid. If you need to take off, feel free to go take care of yourself and rest, get food, water, drink, stretch, whatever you need, man. Uh, Self-care self is always important. So thank you so much again. And uh, I'll let Andrew continue where he was. As long as you don't call him baby, he can stay in the corner. Wow. 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 I mean, wow. You don't put baby in the corner. That's don't put baby in the corner. And of course, there are uh -huh. channel points that you can affect the game with. So if you want to heal players, heal bad guys, give them mythic points, uh, or anything else, the channel points are there to affect the game as well. So there's a hit that heart button. Go and follow Moko Noise. We love Smoko. He's an amazing, amazing person and streamer. So do I die? Am I dead? Am I dead? We'll uh -huh. find out. Oh, it's it is your turn. Yeah, you're so you're basically surrounded by a group of Last of Us clickers, spectral clickers, and uh, they charge at you and they grab you, and uh, they uh, 
spectrally fondle you. No, they don't. They don't do that. But wow, you uh, you failed your save against them, and so you are uh, pretty pretty horrified. Um, for the next nine rounds, you are both panicked and sickened. Okay. Awesome. Well, you're panicked for a D4 rounds and then shaken uh, for there's different defects on here. Good God. You are sickened for 10 minutes of caster level. A lot of vomit. Ooh. You are sickened for 70 minutes and you are panicked for a D4 rounds. You can roll that D4. I don't want to. It's like that. It's like that scene from Team America: World Police. <laughs> yeah, uh, or that scene Lisa, from the or Lisa, that scene from uh, the bathroom when I lived with Brian. Lisa, hey. are you here with me? <laughs> you are panicked for three rounds, and then after you are shaken for another seventy minutes. So I spend. So you spend an hour and a half, an, an hour and ten minutes barfing. You spend and then I run eight, 70. You spend an hour and 10 minutes. You spend uh 18 seconds running away in pure panic. So that and happens, and then you first. spend okay. that happens first, and then you spend 70 minutes both puking or trying to resist puking and being and be like your hands are shaking, you're so scared, but you still have control of your mental faculties. So with that in mind, what would you like to do? I don't get a choice. I run. You would like to run. You uh, run so far away. Quick I question. Did I at, did the little kid was I able to escort the little kid out? Did we skip you? I think we did skip you. Maybe. Okay. But I'm well, just Nick's gonna... turn is fairly simple. He's just running away. I so well, I'm, I'm uh... so scared, right? And, and my turn was going to be relatively simple as well. I was just going to offer my hand to the kid and like escort the kid out, especially if Nick's going to be puking all over the place. As you start to escort the kid out, you can see that Night Owl is like, he's like created a barrier between him and this other room. And you saw him before looking at this person and saying, we haven't crossed you off our suspect list yet. Here's something funny. Are you just gonna push try to push Night Owl aside or are you gonna address what he said? Night Owl, back up. We need to get out of the haunt. Do you make a diplomacy or intimidate check? I would like to make a diplomacy check. So Andrew, to make this things time. more fun, I can see it from Brian's token. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. I don't know That's either. Weird. Oh, is Brian a light source? Brian might be a light source. That's why. So the Are cat you... can't see where he's at, but he can see from the light source. I yeah. don't know how I'm a light sense. source, but okay. You're just a light and inspiration to us all. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> all right. I'll take it. Dark but room. I got a 32 for diplomatizing. You can see he looks agitated, but you are able to move. He allows you to pass with this girl through your, through his square. All right, and I'm just going to move over to here. Since you're ushering, spending your turn ushering her, she will go with you. Okay. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, Rage Song, I think, is done because I did not renew it, and uh, I think we already did our second linger, and the haste is done, so I don't have any buffs up. Yeah. Other you, than my mirror image. And you and Nick, you, like, calmly usher this this girl out, and Nick just, like, shoves by, and it's like, oh, oh, oh. he's, like, panic barfing into his hand. Yeah, that's not 
And you're just kind of like, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Uh, I'm probably not trying not to sympath like be a good person to the kid and also not sympathetically barf because Nick is barfing. <laughs> Matt, you are next. Um <clears throat> and uh just I want to make sure that I get it right. I know that the dinosaur is freaking out because this thing keeps going over and over and over and yeah. over. Yeah, that's really mean. Um uh I'm gonna pull out my scroll of cure serious. Okay. And I'm gonna cast it into the haunt. I don't believe haunts get saves on these, so they don't, they just roll your damage. Screw it up. I wish I could use my caster level rather than five. I should have used my reroll. Sixteen. Um, you can see with the use of your scroll, the spectral images dissipate. Yay. Does that mean the effect dissipates? Uh, no, the haunt is done, but the the eye bite is still active. Damn it! I tried. Um, that's. I mean, that's. I'm done for this round. Um. Oh, this is my l last round of fast healing, and now I'm done. Um, you can see, Matt, as you dissipate this haunt with the holy magic, that Nimbus still looks very scared. And he's, like, looking at you. And you're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. And you have some, you have pretty good sense, motive, perception, pretty good skills in general. You can see Nimbus looks scared, but he doesn't look scared at you. He looks scared behind you. Tango looks behind me. And Tango sees shifting out of the the wall a both of you can roll perception checks. We'll say that. Okay. We'll do Tango's first. Uh, 13 for Tango. Okay. For me, 37. Tango oh, is just kind of, he looks behind you, he does like a 180 and then looks back at Nimbus again, just canting his head to the side, can't figure out what's wrong. You, all you, the first thing you hear in your head is, it's right behind me, isn't it? <laughs> you know, like you've heard in any movie. Mm -hmm. And behind you, you look and you see this mist seeping from the wall it forms this roughly humanoid shape uh, its features are indistinct except for its clawed hands and hairy fanged face mm, that's terrifying that's horrible cool is it though? Suddenly? Um, it reaches out for you, Matt. Okay. You are not flat-footed for this because, with Nimbus's tipping you off, you uh, were able to see this thing. Cool. So that is a twenty-seven touch. Twenty-seven touch. Yep. Yeah, that hits. Okay, you take. 15 points of untyped damage. Untyped? That's bullshit. I believe untyped. Untyped damage, and you must roll a will save. Poison-based? It is fear-based, but you have a minus four to this fear save. And if you are immune to fear normally, you lose that immunity. 
Well, I don't have that. Ooh. Mithril Natural mind cap, bitch. Mithril foil cap, bitch. <laughs> Uh, you make it with a nat 20. You feel the surge of panic welling up inside you, but you are able to fight it off. You have a baby dinosaur to save. And this I is your moment to be a hero. To um, and that is going to end its turn. Brian, you are ushering her out. She's going to move to here. Further away from Night Owl, but is okay. otherwise not going to do anything. She's just going to kind of look at you and just be like, thank you, sir. Night Owl just looks back at Muffin and is like side-eyeing both of you. And then he looks over and his eyes widen like the wide owl eyes and his pupils like dilate way down as he sees this spectral form. Uh, and he is going to well, his mystic bolts are gonna his mystic bolts are pretty much made for this. So these would both be touch versus touch. 19 touch. Well, hit it. And a 21 touch, two hits. Two, three, so an additional three. Plus. As you see, two bolts of electricity land into this creature and appear to damage it. And he says, Tormentor of child child animals, face justice of the night owl. And he five foot steps there. Oivo. Um, this is going to be an odd situation for an animal of like two intelligence to try to figure out. He's got a three intelligence. He's got a three. No, no, he's got a four intelligence. He's got a four intelligence. He's like a small child. So he has enough to make some rudimentary decision making here. Enough int. Um... I think he would know that I am running to safety and that the others are in still in danger of whatever I am running from. Mm -hmm. So he would probably still run in there. Okay. Because he doesn't have any commands, but he also knows the danger was in that room to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right? So. Yeah. So getting through the doorway, he will have to squeeze, which will be two squares of movement for each one. He's still hasted, though. Uh, not anymore. Oh, okay. Well, then his movement is... Let me double check. Because that's at a 40. He has exactly a 40 move, so he is done right there. He could move a little bit further forward if he wants to double move instead, right? Yeah, this would he okay, so that's oh okay, so Brian left with the kid. That's that. Brian's uh, Matt he doesn't see Matt, so he would go to there. Did the door get shut? No. He cannot see into the room where Matt is for some reason. Could be because there's no lights in that room. Do you have a light source, you or Tango, Matt? Because you I just do not. have dark vision? Because I just have dark vision. He has scent. Yeah. The cat does have scent. Then I'm going to give you a rough 
space of where he can smell something off. Okay. He smells Matt's scent right in front of him. Okay. A different scent that smells a little bit like a... It smells sort of like the stable that you were at where the the friendly old man who smells like jerky lives and then s- further he smells this s- stench of like fear actually the scent of fear the body odor the that that accompanies like panic completely saturates this room but in the corner of the room he smells it most strongly about 10 feet in front of him here here's a question for you when you are panicked do you drop what you're carrying yes oh so there's a uh a flame flame tongue that's basically a torch yep and so the cat's gonna because you said rudimentary knowledge he's got a four he puts his paw on the sword and slides it over through the doorway Matt's well, in. this might change things because you might be able to actually see in that room. Oh. So let's do that and see if that has... That does. That did change things. That changed things. Wildly. All right. Oh, he can actually reach that thing, whatever that thing is, through Matt. Can. He double moved, though. True. So if he has, like, extra action mythic stuff he can do, he, he could not. do he that. I mean, he okay. has a point. He has one point he could use to take an action, but I usually save those for, like, saving throws and skill checks and stuff, um, just because he is an animal. Yeah. So. All right. But he's there and can back up Matt. And Matt, if you need to, you can move through a square because you share the feet. And I don't know what's around. There's something around the corner, but I can't make out what it is. Brian, it is your turn. Okay, so um, I guess because when the the girl was hiding originally, I didn't notice her until she kind of ran out and Night Owl was stopping her. Uh, um, But I don't know if I caught her name. So I'll kind of look over at the Night Owl as he did his big Batman thing and kind (laughs) of ran off in the room. And I look over and go, he's a little intense. What's your name, sweetie? And just kind of talk her down so to speak and like let her know that she's safe and just kind of run kid control basically okay uh nick nick runs for two more rounds 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 and he has to end it because he can't do the next one because that would be 65 and he only has 60 move for a double. But hey, he's in the water, so when he starts barfing, it won't be that big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Uh, knowledge. I'm guessing religion, but I could be wrong. It is a knowledge religion. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. This creature is a... It is an undead. Um, you know that occasionally... The desire to cause fear and misery survives even when a bugbear dies. And such a creature can detach part of its vile nature to create frightening spiritual traps. In the forms of haunt, this creature is known as a frightful haunter. Anybody in chat who has the a Pokemon GIF or a Pokemon uh Emoji G of a haunter gets bonus points. Um, a ha- frightful haunter is a medium chaotic evil undead with the incorporeal subtype. You get uh, 
nothing. That is cool. That is it. I spend a mythic point. Do mythic arcane strike. Mm -hmm. Um being fourth tier, which I never updated my paperwork, I get to add total of plus two bonus to my weapon. My okay. weapon is now Undead Bane and Ghost Touch. Okay. And then I swing for the fences. Twenty-five and twenty-one. You hit. Should change it back to myself rather than tango. Um, you want me to roll the damage separately or together? Uh, you can roll it together. Okay. Uh, that's a Gengar. That's not a Haunter, but it's pretty close. So you get half a bonus point. Half a bonus point. <laughs> Twenty-seven damage. Nice. With your ghost touch and undead bane, you can see it's a physical and satisfying hit against a misty and incorporeal creature, and it looks like it took a, a pretty substantial hit from that. Cool. Uh, that is. <laughs> I said I added a skull guy to make the Gengar a little bit more spooky. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm just going to take a five-foot step kind of kitty corner here in case oh, the owl <clears throat> wants to come in and fight or something. Okay. Or at least make sure he doesn't have minuses. Does that end your turn, Matt? That ends my turn. It is the Frightful Haunter's turn. And now you see he is going to reach out, and it looks like he is going to try to touch you again, Matt. But he aims just onto your shoulder at Tango. Does a 24 hit Tango's touch? Yeah, 24 hits Tango's touch. Pango takes 13 points of untyped damage and needs to roll a will save. You also see that this haunt, frightful haunter heals very modestly. Some of the mist is starting to form back together. 22 for Tango. Tango makes it. Oh, he has a minus four to his save, though, because he is within the area of this creature. Is that with the minus four no. already? So 18. Would you like to stick with an 18? Um, I have nothing to increase Tango with. Okay. Unfortunately. Tango is shaken for a minute. Okay. Not that that is completely anything for Tango, really. Mm -hmm. Then you see after this frightful haunter five foot steps and goes into the wall. That head shake is like, God, God damn it. <laughs> um, Muffin looks to you, Brian, and she says, my name is, uh, my name's Muffin. I uh, thank you again. Yeah. I'll allow you to have a little bit of a dialogue here so, with her so because... What, what were you doing down here? How did you get down here? That pig man captured me after the carnival. He made me help him create those disgusting that disgusting vile paste. 
I'm I'm not an I'm not an apothecary. I'm a baker. He just kept ranting about nobody appreciates his gift for his gift to the world of culinary genius, whatever that means. And how long were you down here? Your best guess? It's, it's hard to say. Days. Did you have your own Weeks. shop or were you working with another baker? I, I, I worked with another baker. Where at? Uh, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know the place. You'd be surprised. I'm going to cut the conversation off for that round at there. Okay. But just hold on to that last, last bit if you'd like to continue next round. Perfect. Night Owl is going to ready in action to blast it when it appears. Toivo? Toivo, like, sticks his head in the room and, like, looks around. So the other scent he now sees is this thing. But it's not fighting Matt? Nope. It looks like it's chained to a wall. Yeah, it'll probably just look to Matt, like, seeking... What the fuck are we doing? And it will wait for Matt to say something probably in Pathfinder sign because he knows Pathfinder uh -huh. sign because you cast that spell. Yep. Brian. You didn't have it, to wait it, that long. And it'll probably it look be, back at the doorway a couple of times to kind of be like, Nick? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Where's the bakery that you work at? What's the name of it? It's a small place in Thunder Peaks. It's called The Baker's Appeal. And what village or town is that in? I don't suppose you've ever heard of a place called Thunder Peaks. Well, I think this I... might be a might be a coin flip for Brian because he's been he's had half of his memory of this last thing wiped away. Yes, yeah, did you so, sleep I mean, since I we could, left? <laughs> I could I, try a knowledge local role if you want. I, sure, or... I would. Well. Or I maybe I could try geography, I suppose. Man, imagine if he would have failed that save versus sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna say <laughs> roll a um that would have been great, by the way. <laughs> um I'm gonna say roll a roll a geography. That's more than enough. Uh, you you are thinking Thunder Peaks, Thunder Peaks, your memory is so spotty in the past couple days but you recall thunder peaks and you're you are able to tie it to that rough frontier barbarian town you just came from where you got the job for this okay so the town is called thunder peaks it's not just an a region the region is called with your geography you know the region is called the realm of the thunderborn and that town is called thunder peaks Gotcha. Hey, Night Owl, you ever heard of the Baker's Appeal? Uh, he looks over and says, Don't get out much. Don't eat much sweets. Bad for my shape. And you see he like turns his head a whole 360 degrees and leans through the door and says, but we can verify that. Offer. Okay. 
Uh, I'm assuming probably. Chip I'm gonna. Chatton I'm gonna cut. I'm, his, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the turn at that, Nick. Five ten, fifteen twenty, twenty five thirty, thirty five forty, forty five fifty. Actually, how far is it until I'm completely underwater? We said three. You got three rounds to run. So, um, once you this room is completely underwater. Okay, so I'd have to stay at the doorway. It, you would have to stay at the doorway unless you want to push through the pressure flow that is rushing into this room. No, he'll just go to the farthest corner because, you know, and then cower, right? Because once you can't go any further, you cower. Yeah. So I go into the corner and I cower. <laughs> and, and then at the end of this turn, your your panic fades away and you're just sickened and shaken. Or sickened, probably yeah. the rest. Sickened and shaken for the rest of this duration for the rest of this crawl probably well will restoration take care of that yeah okay because i've got or lesser restoration will re lesser restoration take care of that lesser restoration oh damn it removes fatigue to exhaustion and heals ability damage. It does not remove the fear or shaking condition. I was more about the, the barfing condition. The sickened That's condition. sickened. Yeah. It does not remove that. And you're sickened. So you're just fighting nausea in your stomach. You're not necessarily all you can do is barf and move. Oh, I thought that that's what sickened was. Is that's that nauseated. Just, oh, okay. So you're you're like on the cusp of, of just hurling and being able to do nothing, Sicken gives you a minus two to a bunch of stuff like Shaken does. Gotcha. Okay. So collectively, you have a lot of penalties, but you can still act on your own accord after this turn. Okay. That's And that would be my turn. Matt. Um, <clears throat> With hand sign, I tell Toivo to uh, find Nick and guard. Okay. Because, like, Nick screamed out of here. Um, and then I move to here. Um, sheath my sword, and I pull out a net, which is now an undead Bane ghost touch net. <laughs> and I'm going to net this motherfucker, and he can't walk through no fucking walls at that point. That's true. A net. Okay. So, after Matt, it is the Haunter's turn. From inside the wall, he is going to reach out at Toivo with a 50% mischance because he is inside the wall. Um, but he does have blind fighting. Okay. But a 25 hit Toivo's touch. Probably. Uh, da, da. Yes, 25 definitely hits Toivo's touch. Okay. So because of blind fighting, he gets to roll the missed chance twice. High hitting. I mean, high or low, it doesn't matter. He would hit because he got one low, one high. So he does hit Toivo. Okay. Toivo takes 13 points of untyped damage and has to roll a will save. This is a fear effect. Is it considered an enchantment fear effect? Uh, it is just a mind-affecting fear effect. Okay. So not necessarily enchantment. 16. 16. 
A 16 fails. Failure means that he is shaken for one minute, which is a minus two on most D20 checks. Okay. Minus two on attack, save, skills, and ability checks. Okay. And, and he is going to come out of the wall to here. So if Matt can see him, Matt gets his action. Uh, Night Owl sees him, so Night Owl is going to blast him. Brian, you just hear from the other room as he like whips his head back in and says, just this. <laughs> Justice indeed. Justice indeed. Did I get the right thing? Definitely not. It's four higher than that. 19. Which that is going to hit the Haunter. Ten damage. Matt, he appeared from the wall. Uh, if you can see him, you can make your attack at him. Right here? Oh, where I keep clicking the door? Yes, he is right there. He may have cover from you. I don't. You probably can't see yeah, all of them. I can't see all of them. So, twenty-two. Twenty-two. And I am holding on to the lead rope. So you hit. Cool. Um. So it's entangled. Takes a minus two to attack rolls, minus four to de dex, can only move half speed, cannot charge or run. If I control the tailing rope, um, oh, so um, we have to make opposed strength checks, him and me. <laughs> but, but he has no strength score. Oh. Then he loses. He can't make the roll. He has slash for strength. Oh, dang it. The net doesn't do any damage, does it? Um, it it normally wouldn't, but it's undead bane. So if he's undead, he's gonna take two die six. Plus two. Plus two. So roll your damage. Ten points of damage. <laughs> He has it that hurts. And that ends his turn. Uh muffin. Do you know the muffin man? The muffin man? Muffin just says says to you, do you know the way out of here? Yes. Then let's go. This place is dangerous. We have to wait for my friends to be done fighting the monster inside. She's just going to five foot back further away from the fighting. Night Owl. And and, and actually, uh, and, and kind of noticing that, I'll kind of nod and it's like, be careful, and I head over to stand in front of the door, kind of looking out, you know, I'll peek the door to look out. But we wouldn't want uh, anything to sneak up on us. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll keep the door shut. Though. Oh, okay, okay. I just, I just like peek out of the with the pistol and then kind of close the door. And that'll be it for me. Night Owl.
is going to five, ten, fifteen, twenty, move to here and says looks at the frightful haunter. And he says, all that metallic net around you, you're like a, a lightning rod. Justice strikes swiftly like a lightning bolt. And then he bolts through uh, the frightful haunter into the wall behind it. And it has a penalty on reflex saves, does it not? From its decks? Uh, yeah, it has a minus four to its decks. And you hear this loud cracking thunderbolt as it fails its save. I'll let you know, it can make a DC 25 strength check to break out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before it can, you can see it just evaporates. Night Owl raises his feathered wing and just kind of And we are currently now out of combat. Does Toivel run off to find and guard Nick? Yeah. Um, I am then going to start. Is there like a lock? Like, how, is like the chain coming from the wall, like the chain locked to like the neck thing? Or it is. It's like a walled manacle. It's like a manacle that is chained to the wall. That fits in a collar okay. around its um, neck. So I want to pick the lock to let it out. Um, Apparently he can't because he can't see how to get out. He would grab the sword with his mouth. He's going to grab the sword with the his handle. mouth. Okay, then that's going to change things for him. He is going to have 20 and 40. It's like this cat carrying a sock in its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this cat opens the door. That's right. Is there much of a door left? Ooh, the cat no, like there's not much of a door left. Passes it down. Uh, what was the 39, Matt? Well, I don't think the oh, door that was, was shut, my disabled right? device. You are able to disable the, to unlock the manacles. Okay. And at this point, it is no longer sh panicked. It is just shaken. Okay. Not just a cat with a sword, Tabletop Hazard. It's a cat with a flaming sword. Yeah, it's Dark Souls all over again, but not a dog. Dark Souls had a dog with a flaming sword? I Was it Dark Souls or was it Nio? I think it was Dark Souls. Yeah, there was a dog with that what wielded a sword or a wolf. Yikes. That's scary. I follow TikTok that has a border collie that wields it. So Matt, you have Nimbus is free. Mm-hmm. The baby triceratops. I... It is it is medium size. So compared to some of the triceratopses you've seen, it's pretty small. But it would still be pretty heavy to carry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I am going to rip a page out of my dictionary. And uh, I am going to share language with Nimbus. Okay. Um, and I am going to share a uh, Hallet with him. Does that work if he has a two int? Um. Let me check. I think it does. Yeah, I think it. I believe it does, because we've done it with the cat before, when the cat had a two end. Yeah, there doesn't say anything. Um, 
Yeah, so its intelligence doesn't matter. Um, it says if the target lacks the mental capacity to grasp an actual language, it still gains enough knowledge to respond and carry out even extremely complex commands or suggestions coached in the language. But it, it can't, so it understands you, but maybe can't speak or it can speak. It can't it speak. Can sp oh, can it speak? Yeah. Because it has enough knowledge to even respond. Um, but it's would it have be very limited because uh, they still don't have like a greater reasoning ca uh, capacity. So they have like a temporarily enhanced vocabulary. Um, but you have to like remove ambiguity or guesswork, it says, for like really dumb things. What do you want to say to Nimbus? Um, are you hurt? Not hurt. Scared. Should we get you home? Home. Home. Yes, home. Follow me and we will get you home. Home. Um, it just kind of paces towards you. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to, yeah, just start heading out. Kango and I. Um, do you want... <laughs> Do you want to just give control of him to me and I can just move him behind me? Yeah. There you go. Cool. I'm be like, Night Owl, we're heading out. Good. 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 The child is safe. Um, so I shared Pathfinder sign with Night Owl um, when I casted it on uh, Toivo before we get in. I'm going to say, keep an eye on the girl. I don't trust it. <laughs> and in Pathfinder sign, I say agreed. <laughs> and in Pathfinder sign, I say <laughs> from the other room. It loses a little something in the translation. That's okay. You guys don't want to. You guys don't want to come this way. This water so, isn't safe anymore. So you have. Well, the water is continually being cleaned. Oh, okay. It's. I mean, not magically cleaned. It's just being continually Filter. purged yeah. and filtered. So what now? While we're walking, would I be able to use two charges on my wand on Tango? Sure. To heal him up. Yeah. Cool. I do have a way of getting rid of it, but I don't want to. Because? Uh, because a high-level caster put four contingencies on me. Oh. So if I drown, um, if I drown, four contingencies go off, and one of them is the heal spell. But you, what you're saying is you don't want to drown. Correct. And I don't want to waste drown, water breeding, 60% swim speed, and freedom of movement either. I thought... I thought you only hung out with that fire check. I didn't know that you got water breathing. No, breathing. Breathing. Damn you. What's wrong with fire breathing? I got a sword for that. <sighs> if I use the sword, it doesn't burn. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know from the layout that there are two doors in the lounge that you were in. Mm -hmm. One leads to a hallway filled with beans. The weird alcoves with beans yep. in them. And another is a door that you were not able to previously get into. Okay. Well, um, the hallway with beans, and then it eventually leads to that room with the jigsaw in it. Yep. Um, I 
you also <clears throat> recall that somebody was in that room with the dragon and left for yep um Brian do you have a way to help Nick with your magic Mm, nope. Unfortunately, I do not. Yeah, neither do I. Um, well, let me see. Yeah, I don't have any restoration. I have lesser restoration, and that's it. Yeah, I don't think we have anything in our in our gear either. Because it's not considered a curse, is it? It is not. Okay. Thicken gives you a minus two attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, saving throws, skill checks, and ability checks. In addition to shaking, giving you a minus two on attack rolls, saving throws, skill checks, and ability checks. Yeah, basically any time I roll a die 20, I get a minus four. You, you get a minus four, and you get a minus two on your damage. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't, I don't, even, we don't even have any magic items that I know of that in our no. stuff that would affect Does it. Does so it very help? Kinda... Yeah, yeah it, will make your, it will make your dry heaving be flavored. Uh -huh. um, yay? <clears throat> Nick, do you, do you want to guard the girl and Nimbus here while Brian, I, Night Owl, and Toivo go check out the rest, or do you, I mean, what, how capable are you right now? I'm at big disadvantages, whatever that haunt dead is. I can't get it out of my head, guys. I can't get it out of my head. It's making my stomach twist, and I can't stop shaking. I can't, I hold up my hands, and they're like, I can't. Whatever it did, it did something, and I just can't get it out of my head. I don't think we can like I want to bark but I'm trying real hard not to I don't think we can leave and come back and they'll still be here like no. if we go they're going to run true so we have to push forward how how do you what do you want to do do you want to I mean we got to guard Nimbus and we got to guard the girl and I don't think we want to bring them with us or we could keep them, you know, a room behind, but I can also watch them. Night Owl volunteers. I don't, yeah, I don't even know it. how we'd get the Triceratops out. I don't think he can hold its breath that long, or the girl. Um, I would assume they probably have another doorway. Yeah. They, I mean, they might. We can't go out the way we came. We'd have to, we have to continue no matter what, because we don't really have a way out for them. Uh, Perhaps I can I, also investigate while you uh, continue. Yeah. I say in Pathfinder sign, because I believe I identified this, that spiral staircase in the room we just left uh, is another exit out. But we just very, have to... Very good. Yeah, we have to take the time to bury it out, but yeah, we can get out that way. So... Well, maybe we keep them in the room adjacent. To Brian, I think you got something additional about that staircase. Because it appears to be collapsed right now. Oh, uh, also, that's uh, an illusion, I believe. Oh. Was... The staircase is... So that there. actually will lead out. Yes. So we could just... Have night, I will take them and go back to town. Yes. Or we could have them stay in that hallway in the door area there, and if anything happens, they have a way to run. 
True. Because we could use Night Owl for the monster. Like, we might not make it out of here. Now, maybe, maybe with that being said, maybe Night Owl should take them out. Just so we can relay the information of what we know. Okay. In uh, case, because if we don't survive... That's fair. Um, I want to look the girl over, the woman over, the halfling, child, gnome, whatever, for any signs of this drug or like any signs of uh, someone going through the effects if they look like, you know, like they're dried out or they have that, um, that dirt or debris. And while Matt's doing that, I'm going to detect magic on her. Uh, looking at her, you see. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay. I'm using my wand to heal myself and the cat. Okay. Um... Twenty-four. Nope, this roll is important. Just gotta find where my little token is. You're re using your re-roll. Yeah, because I don't want to let a pod person out. Forty. Much better than a twenty-four. Wow. And Brian, were you also attempting to perceive or you were per attempting to do something else? I was going to cast Detect Magic and look at the... Got it. Okay. You can also roll a Perception as well. All right. So Matt, looking at her, she does have... Um, her fingertips are stained green as if she has had her hands in this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, her. she's got an apron on that has, like green smears on her it is not subtle that she has been in this stuff working with it using it looking at her she does not appear to be drugged or under the influence of anything so like no signs of it like on the lips or on the nose like we heard from some of the sick guards no it does okay. not look like that but it does look like she's been in the stuff. Uh, 27 for my perception. Brian, you um, what you see looking at her mm -hmm is her apron she's got a necklace like an amulet that she's wearing it's like a locket it appears magical as you study her so the apron and the necklace um and looking at her Um, looking at her apron, um, it appears that her apron is also magical. Okay. Um, I will relay in hand sign to Night Owl and Nick and Brian of what I noticed. Like, I, her fingers and apron are stained, but it doesn't look like she's had any of the drug. But definitely need to keep our eye on, just because we don't know how it works. And I'll say... We should have her take the feet. apron off and wash her hands in the water. It keeps It's automatically filtering. The apron and the necklace on her are magical. She's not a prisoner. She's complicit.
or she was forced. She might not necessarily know that it's magical or what they do. She might not know, but they would. Right. I, I doubt they'd let her keep it. Well, she gets to keep it now. <laughs> what do they do? Do we know what they do? You have to. You'd have to handle them more okay. off her person to be able to identify them. You just studying them those rounds, you're able to. Uh, you're able to. Well, we should at that least know generally the school. Uh, I would say you could roll an arcane to pick up on the school. All right. Um, because like with detect magic, you usually can do like what school and power. Yeah. Did we press the digitation her clean to get it off the stains and stuff off? Sure could. Uh, twenty one. Twenty one. Take a ten. Yeah. I will tell her that I'm going to use magic to clean her off. So that she knows what I'm doing so she's not freaking out. And then I will press the digitation her clean. Okay. Since the penalties aren't really going to apply to that. The green stains are removed. Now, Oscar, did you get the green stuff anywhere else on you? It can make you really sick, and it can make other people really sick. So we need to make sure to get rid of it all. Uh, just on my hands and clothes. Okay. I would like to sense mode of that to see if there's any anything behind those words. With her answering him, if he she got it anywhere else other than her, yeah, hand hand uh, where he saw, yeah. That seems honest. Okay. That seems she is answering the question in the most straightforward manner possible. Perfect. I'll say this is a really nice apron. Did they give it to you or did you bring it from home? It's mine. How did you get it? It's really cool. It was my mother's. Oh. <clears throat> and what's it's been passed pass down through my family. For three generations. And what's your mother's name? Her name was, she says, Brownie. Oh, okay. Has she passed away? She nods. Was the necklace Sorry hers too? Sorry to hear that. Yes, it was. Why, why do you ask? Well, because it looks like it is va very valuable. Oh, she says. And it stands I out see. with everything else. She says, oh, I see. And you see she takes the necklace off and she just kind of lowers her head and holds it out. I'm assuming you want this as payment for saving me. No, but can I look at it? She just kind of like holds it out. I will look at it and detect magic. Okay. Uh, roll a spellcraft to identify it. Uh, in Pathfinder sign, I will just say the apron has illusions upon it. I got an eight. That's after my minus four. You have no idea, but it does look like a very nice. Yeah, I'll go, guys. I can't, I can't. I can't focus on these. My hands won't stop shaking. Uh, the amulet has a abjuration effect. Yeah, that doesn't help me. I hand it to you. Do you have detect magic? You want to try and identify it? Roll spellcraft, Brian. I would love to. Uh, 
What's that hand motion you keep making? Your item is actually magical. We're trying to figure out what it is for you. Oh, she says. Is that some sort of code? It's like a spell spell casting. Oh. 21. And and after <laughs> she was talking about her hand sign, our pathfinders, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I still. I, I mean, I, I, mean, the best I part Nick is, misunderstood her meaning, so I'm going to say that I, in character, misunderstood her meaning. Brian <laughs> and G Chat, that's what you get. It is. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Just look at I'm just looking at Brian. Uh uh absorbs magic missiles. Oh. I'll hand it back to the girl. He like hesitantly takes it. Can we see your apron as well? She like gets like a vacant stare and looks like it's not straight. her only clothes, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, she's wearing a dress on a blouse under it, but she just kind of gets this vacant stare and stares at the like your feet and just kind of like mechanically blinks and sighs as she unties her apron. Don't worry, we'll give it back. Hands it to you. I, is this is this necessary? It will let us know what can be used if things go rough. Uh, what tools are at our, at our disposal. Um, do saucy. you remember how you got down here? I will hand it to Brian while, she, while Matt talks to her. Well, they kidnapped me. Mm -hmm. She says, that pig person did. Mm. He made me work down here. It was after the carnival. The carnival? We... That's been... It's been like months? Uh, let me see. That was, yes, months. You have been down here for a very long time. How long? I don't get to see day and night. Days? Weeks? Months. Months? Oh, I'm so fired. Um, I want to sense motive that response to okay. see how genuine, like that concern is to being gone months. Roll your sense motive. Twenty-two. It's a new. It's a new revelation for her. She. Seems to have completely lost herself down here. She seems afraid. And yeah, that's the best you can glean from her. Um, When you were kidnapped, did he use his magic to make you fall asleep? Or did he like just throw like a, throw you in a sack and carry you down here? She stops and thinks. I honestly have trouble remembering the carnival seemed fine and I went to his pie making tent 
and it is fuzzy. Everything's fuzzy. It felt like I was in a dream a long time ago. Um, all of you have played through Carnival of Tears. Yeah, but we didn't go to the pie-making tent. No, but what she is describing is a sensation you may sort of be familiar with, was how the townspeople were reacting to the murder and mayhem there. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. They were completely oblivious of it. This girl's American. She gets kidnapped and her first fear is losing her job. How is she going to pay for her outrageous health health uh, costs? <laughs> right. Brian? Did Brian get the, I, the thing? With the apron what is that? 20 is it total? 20? Yeah, if, if Nick can aid me, I'd get a 20. You do not get it. Okay. I just shake my head. I give it back to her. I'll even tie she... it on. She takes it back and kind of like possessively takes it back and puts it back on and quickly ties it. I will say, thank you for letting us look. We need to just make sure everything is okay and that they didn't do anything to any of your things. I'd like to leave now, if that's all right with everyone. <clears throat> so that's... We have what we're stop. trying to figure out. We have to stop the bad guys. Well, Otherwise, they're going to keep the, doing it. The way we came in was through the water. And it's all underwater. We used magic to not drown. Oh. We were hoping that there's a better way out. I see. After we stop whatever's happening. Then I'll wait here. I'll not. I'll kind of nod to Night Owl. And he just gives you this narrow-eyed, solemn nod. <clears throat> and I'm going to lean down to Nimbus. I'm like, Nimbus, this is Night Owl. And I look up at Night Owl. You speak Hallet? Yes? Being an owl person from the Hallet lands? I'm super hoping you do. <laughs> nope. These refugees do not speak Hallet. <laughs> They speak common and syrinx. Riga, you got to do some better education for your refugees. <laughs> Damn it, Friga! This area is safe. Darkwing, Darkwing Night Owl has deemed it so. All right, so leave the the Triceratops baby and the girl with a Night Owl. I rip another page. <laughs> this I poor dictionary Night, is just completely destroyed. I give Night Owl the ability to speak Hallet for the 24 hours. Because oh, then it can speak to both Tengu and the Triceratops? That's the hope. Okay. Oh, I've haven't I haven't cast share language so much in one day. <laughs> you have any spells left? Oh uh, yeah, because I have seven first level spells. I've used four of them though. Three of them on share language. Perhaps I can still aid you, even though I am not with you. Who of you is most likely to be wounded? Hmm. Me. He looks at you, me. Brian. Me and Brian. No. No, he looks at you. You, Nick. Nick. Because, Brian, you're a ranged fighter. <laughs> That's true, but I'm or the, also or the cat. pretty injured. Or you the see, he reaches into his bag. No, I think you'll need this. And you see, he pulls out some clay mixed with some, some filings, and he kind of, like, spreads it on his iron... Uh, he spreads it on his feathered fingers and he like Simba's you with it. And for the next 90 minutes, you have clay skin. Your skin becomes thick and tough as clay. And it grants you DR5 adamantine until uh 
until you take 45 hit point until it prevents 45 hit points worth of damage. Play skin is such a great spell. Okay. And it's not a suppository. Also, you seem a little fragile. So I'll give you this as well. And he puts a bear's endurance on you. Plus four to con. Okay. I'll bring my hit points up. Now, go deeper into the heart of evil and know that the night owl watches over you. You see he grabs like Muffin and Nimbus and he kind of like but he makes the noise as he pulls them into this room. Sounds good. He's a lot of fun. He is. Junk. Just wait till he meets the uh what's what's the Brian, what's what's uh what's Han's other class? The one where he wears the where's his the summoner? The summoner, the yeah. The synthesis. There's gotta be another summoner synthesis that's also like an artificer named like Gizmo <laughs> Owl. <laughs> so right. would you like to continue? Yes. All right, go ahead and move yourselves. I'm like trying to move myself and then I realize I'm on the, the Twitch stream screen. Now. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that. At least you're that not typing in the it. chat roll, whatever, backslash roll. Right. Exactly. And I just look at you all and point to the right door and the left door. I don't remember if they went to the same place or not. I don't think they did. We, we have a map. You do have a map. Yeah, I I don't think we went through that upper door, though, in our dream or our brain walk. I think we came from the south. Right, but the so bottom I think we door should... does not lead into the upper door because otherwise we would know where the, where the yeah, upper Yeah, what door I'm is. saying is so we don't know what, what's in that upper door, yeah. so we should check that out. Yeah. Um, do you want me to go first, Brian? Yeah. You do not detect any traps from the door. Okay. Uh, is it locked? I mean, there's a lock on the thing. I'm assuming it's locked. It is locked. Uh, I will take the time to pop the lock. Okay. Thirty-one. Uh, you are able to unlock the door. Uh, stand back up. Have my sword ready. And People in chat that wanted to see the original map. There it is. <laughs> there's the map that we saw via our dreamscape in the mind of a buffoon and seeing this entire place from his point of view as you open this door inside you see the floor of this chamber dominated by a 10 foot diameter corpse flower all sorts of plant tendrils hang from the ceiling of this chamber, all which give this room a strange and alien feel. And the, it's hot in here, like like a sauna. And it glows a, a vibrant red. Um, in fact, there is light. Coming from the flower? From the room, it feels, in general. Nick, is this is what you is this what you saw when you communed with nature? Let's do that. Did that change the color of the light? Yep. Skip turned it to red. Yeah. 
um, um, knowledge nature to know what the f a corpse flower is. Um. So you have seen them before as Matt in the real floor in the real world. It's if you've seen. It's you can Google it. You know, but oh I'm yeah, pretty the sure ones you've that seen it. Smell like rotting meat when they bloom or something. Yes, but this one doesn't doesn't have a stench to it. Okay. Yeah, they're huge too. Yes. Um, I look at my nature person. So what the fuck do we do with this, Nick? Yeah, what? Uh, it's not what I saw, right? Uh, what you saw in as far as when you cast your spell and yeah, this had your vision. Plant, this isn't the plant creature thing. That is not the plant creature. You're not sure. Well. Can you speak with plants and animals, Nick? Da, da, da. I can. Not animals, knowing. elementals, phase, plants, as per speak with animals, plants, or tongues. What animals, is this? With animals, this? elementals, phase, and plants. What is this called? Uh, it is a mythic ability called Tongue of the Land. Crazy. Tongue of the Land. And I'm like, I just talk with people. You, you This one's on you. Okay. What do you want to do? There's it does it's not there's nothing saying anything to you at the moment. You just I will just say the... Hello, plant. What are you is this your home? It's leaves shudder to everyone else, it's leaves shudder and you feel a slight breeze. And you get like this shaky sound almost in your mind, Nick. And this is what it says to you. What do you, what do you mean connection to what, to who? And who is we? I can't even see where Tango is. Yeah, that door has him just kind of trapped. I can just pull a new one down. There. Thank you. I moved like everybody. I'm going to put Nick here. So the leaves shake again and you get another, you're speaking to it. So there's a verbal component to it, but it almost feels mental in the way it responds to you, Nick. Yeah. Well, it's as per the speak with plants spell, so. Yeah, but that's still like a like a magical yeah, verbal communication. Yeah. And this is different in the way it responds to you. Okay. Although you know that your magic is still affecting. So it's not using it through my ability, it's using something else? It's hard to tell. Okay. Feed me, Shemar, feed me. So this is what you get this time, Nick, as it speaks to you. And then now you see the corp 
this corpse flower sort of unfurls and opens and it forms almost what looks like a plant like chair to sit in of its own plant mass. Everyone sees it do that. Can I take another shot at identifying this? Because I'm like, <laughs> I, I look back at Matt because he says corpse follower, and I'm like, wait. <laughs> yeah, now that it opens up, can I make, because like corpse flowers are supposed to have like a, not a chair. You could roll a knowledge nature or a knowledge arcane. I am going to tell you that this DC is going to be very difficult. Okay. I'm going to do Knowledge Arcane. I only okay. have Knowledge Nature, so. Seven. Yeah, and I don't this... really, I might as well not have it. I'm going to spend an Inspiration Point. Oh, wait, that's. To get a 20. On my roll. That your die roll is a 20? That my die roll is a 20. Okay. I'm going to spend a mythic poly shnikey burgers. I think think you, you did the thing. I got a 29. I don't know what your take 20 is. Is it that? I got oh, a... Oh, I see. I got a 48. Okay. So... Um, as a familiar, Toivo has all of my skill ranks tango um he, or yeah tango, tango. Uh, so he'll he'll aid me for a 50 okay um did i you did shake yeah you did shake tango conscious in yep. combat yep. um the dc is difficult but it's not that difficult uh it is a dc dc 40 you know what this, or you recognize what this is, Matt. And if you're going to share, as you know, I'll share. Um, this is not just a, this is not just a corpse flower, but this would be probably closer to a magic item. You've heard of magic plants before that are able to be planted and cultivated and many times they bear fruit that can heal you or can do other create good berries that are good berry bushes this one looks this one is different this one this plant appears to be a plant that affects someone as it was this arcane or uh i did uh, arcane he did arcane yeah. i did nature this appears to be a magical item a magical plant that can be used to telepathically bond with another who what or where you are not sure though can you ask where its connecting plant is where do its roots reach yeah I will ask it what else it's connected to or who else it's connected to. And then it eats us all. No, 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 no. I um. This is very much Nick, like talking to the Borg. Yeah. I look at you guys. I say it says it speaks to the consensus, the budding node, and its children to its kin. We yearn for connection. I think it's connected to the monster that we're after. 
but it's not the monster. It's just connected to it. Okay. That's my guess. Because this doesn't look at all like it. But from what Matt says, it's connected to it. So maybe this is how they get you. They place people in it. Yeah, I... <laughs> I trust Bolo's <laughs> optometry skill more than I trust that plant. <laughs> yeah. So... I, I think I... we have to destroy the plant. This one or the other one? this one first i don't think so i think i close the door i go i think it would be better if this one stays because if we kill the other one we can talk to this one and if there's any remnants left alive we'll know because it will know because it's connected to them all we okay. might be able to we might be able to use this plant to track all of the other remnants i'm gonna close this door since you said you closed it yeah. oh that's a good idea um I, and i'll say thank Thank you. I'll, I'll, we'll be back. And I close the door. And all it responds with when you say thank you is it says we yearn for connection. Yeah. It just has been repeating that every response you say. Yeah. I think we can use this after we kill it. This plant might help us or help whoever to try and find anything else that might be out there connected to it. Yeah, and I if don't not, like that. And if not, it'll let us know if we finished our job killing that damn thing, right? Matt's got a bad feeling about this. I'd rather go see an optometrist. And then I open the other door. <laughs> you open the other door. Um, looking down this door you can see this hallway resembles a macabre gallery each alcove with each alcove with with alcoves each filled with a translucent sack many of the alcoves are empty but some display a horrifying sight of either a humanoid of of humanoid figures floating in the fetal position appearing to dissolve away. Um, no, what type of knowledge to know what type of thing these sacks are? Because I'm going to make my weapon that bane. I'm just going to go stab into all of the sacks. To stop them from doing whatever they're doing. These, these appear to be all plant-like in nature. Um, sorry, I typed the wrong number. That should be a 33. Still enough. Still plant like um make my weapon uh plant bane and um I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that's good against plants. Um yeah, because I just wanna just want to destroy these things but yeah you stab your weapon into it and it just kind of like some of them are empty so there's nothing in there yeah. but you're going into the ones that have things in you stab and it's just like it spills green guts out onto the floor okay. oh um uh for my other plus one bonus i'm going to do neutralizing because this way if it's acidic it won't like eat my weapon away okay just because I have no idea what to expect inside them. But so yeah, there's I just... one here. There's one here. And it looks like there's one here. Um, so. What is uh, everybody else following or fire? <laughs> Are we okay to follow you there, Matt? 
um, yeah, yeah, this is horrific. Definitely body snatchers. As you round the corner, you see that there are two people standing in the hallway. Their forms are slightly shadowed, but you're able to make them out details with their with your dark vision. Okay. Don't like it, don't One like it. appears like this. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Ah, ha, ha. <clears throat> no, it, uh, uh, the first one in the front appears like this. Does he look like the description of that guard that went missing? Seems like it is a very likely and obvious choice, and the other one appears like this. Minus all the background. Have we met that person before? You have not. Does Oh, but does that follow the description of the librarian aide? One looks like a scribe, one looks like a soldier. <clears throat> and with that, you need to roll an ish. Yeah, I figured. We are rolling an ish. You are rolling an ish. But all of us. <sighs> okay, minus. <laughs> oh my God. I'm editing mine right now. No one mess with it. Okay, I'm good. Wow. Okay, I'm in. Yay, minus four to everything. Mm -hmm. I believe initiative is part of those as well. Those count as those skills, so. Wow, that's not good. I am done. Wasn't there three missing people? You are correct. Yeah, we're still missing the the lady, the Triceratops's mom, essentially, right? Thanks. All right. First is Yannick the Scribe. Uh he looks at you matt and you see he <laughs> and he just barfs this this line of acid pass into you into tango and it flings past you it's this torrential line of vomit does he hit his friend by chance he does he cool. vomits all over him cool uh, it's a reflex save. I have a 25. And to tango. Yes. Oh, and that one. Do you have evasion? Uh, Tango does not have evasion. Oh, me? I do not have evasion. Okay. You, this, the DC is a 25. <sighs> and it's 51 points of acid damage for full. Right. You see it hits the man in front of him like the, there's no... Chat, there's no redeemed thought. a dice re-roll. Oh, re-roll on the nat one. There's no oh, thought nice. to it, and he appears unaffected. Tango made it for half. Nice. Bentley to the rescue. Yay, Bentley! Thank you, Bentley. Thank you, Bentley.
And that ends his turn, oh, Matt. Was that was that a spell? Like, did he like cast a spell, or was that? No, he just, just like just barfed all puky. over you guys. Nice, nice. Um, I move in. My weapon's already plant bane and uh, neutralizing. So. I'm going to come in and stab uh, this dude in front of me. You get the plant, plant bane against him. Oh, awesome. He is treated as a plant. Uh, my swift action, I study combat him. All right. Um, oh. Ooh. 42. Do I have improved crit yet? Fuck no. You hit. You guys never crit. Yeah, because none of us have improved crit. That's the problem. Uh, and 28 for the second. That hits. Okay. Or we just uh, roll with Pappy like me. Can I roll together? Yes, you can. Unless you have energy damage. I do not have energy damage. Uh, well, unless they're also considered an Earth subtype, then I get... Okay. What? 43 damage. Oof. He is injured, but he does not look bloodied. Uh, that is my turn. Okay, Brian. I will, as a uh, standard, I will cast my last third level spell. Cast our favorite, Haste. Good one. Uh, that's going to hit everybody. Cool. That's the hope. And yep. then... As a uh, move action, I'm going to initiate my rage song. And you guys hear Brian start singing, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that will be my move. So I've got... Um, I'm going to leave it at, well, actually, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up. Uh, it's five. Was this a mirror image you had on yourself? Yeah. Is, is that, that minutes, minutes or is that round? If it's minutes, it's probably, it's probably also gone with minutes. Okay. Then I'll, I'll take it off here. I'm going to back up to, oh, wait. If I do it as the, no, I could do the Bardic as a Swift. The cast spell, so then I move, yeah. So then I'll just move back to, like, here, and I'll get rid of the mirror images. Boom, okay. And that should be it for me. Okay. After you is Sar Sergeant Danisk. Matt, he is going to two-hand his longsword and okay. overhand chop at you. Power attack. Vitals. Okay. Not, not vital strike. He'll just power attack. Thank God Matt's the one taking these swings because he's the attack one Attack number one. A possible crit with the 37 to hit. Dear Lord. Roll, roll. 29 to confirm. Uh, I have a 25% chance to be immune to crits. Cool. Do you want to roll? Yep. <clears throat> I did not roll. So instead, my legendary armor is going to use one of its legendary powers to turn a critical hit into a normal hit. All right. So... 
Uh, that is going to be plus nine for this. A total of 28 damage on the first hit. Okay. And the second attack is but you only. You said he was vital striking. No, I did not vital strike. I just oh, normal attacked. Okay. Just power attack. Okay, hold on. 28 yeah. minus 6 is 22. But the 17 is going to miss. I know that'll miss you. Yeah. And that would end his turn. Okay. Toivo. Uh, Toivo hasn't really been given a command yet, so. He could delay for after you. Yeah, he delays. All right, Nick is your turn right after him, or yeah. next. What a cramped corridor. Mm hmm. Hmm. And the edge of this thing's on the side, like to Matt's right, is or isn't open. Like these squares have things, in uh, them, or are they open? Or are they not open spaces to sit in? You, this one has a wall, but so it appears that this one is open. Although you'd need to be in Matt's square to step into it. This one is open, but it's got like goop all over in it all over it matt just stabbed whatever was in there right but this one i mean because you can move through a friendly square to get into it right so yes you could move through matt square and then into that and i can't see these other ones then i mean i can see them but you can see that they open it looks like this one right here is like some like it has just been emerged from as this one right here as well. Okay. Well, oh, so they came from those. Um. Oh. So we know that these two aren't the actual people. These are the fakey people. That's my assumption. That's why I stabbed them. Well, yeah. <laughs> to, to, I mean, do we see the big steaming wound from the, the plant damaging sword that Matt did? You can see like green ichor and steam oh. is coming from the stab that he okay, yeah. Then I am going to, I don't even know if this is going to do anything. I believe it's when they're wounded, is when you can tell that there's something off, right? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna pull out a wand. I don't know what it does yet. I gotta look it up. Is the red number your hit points, Matt? Yep, Matt is bloodied, by the way. Oh yes. Um, because I didn't top myself off beforehand. Oh, that doesn't really do anything. That doesn't do anything. I mean, it does stuff, but not right. Not in combat. It does stuff not in combat. So I am just instead not gonna I'm not gonna pull out a wand. I'm just gonna heal Matt. Okay. Toivo is after you. Um, Matt, I'm going to cure mod you. Sweet. I'll let you roll it if you want. Oh. So, 2 day 8? Yeah, 2 day 8 plus 9. Oh, that's pretty good. I am no longer bloodied. Yeah, I don't think I get bonuses. I just think my heals count as. And does that end your turn, Nick? Uh, I will tell Toivo that there are foes over here, but that there's not 
any room for them. So Toivo will come to the door, but he'll just sit there because he wants to make sure that Matt, uh, uh, actually he'll go, he'll squeeze to kind of right there. He just kind of, and he kind of looks at you and he says, meow, meow, can you move out of the way? Meow, meow, <laughs> meow so meow. I can rip them apart. Right. Meow, meow. <clears throat> Round two, Yannick is first. You see he points at you, Matt, and he lets out this piercing scream, this inhuman screech, which, you know, if you've seen the movie, mm -hmm. it's like that. Uh, you need to roll a fortitude save. This is a sonic effect. So if Brian has anything for that. I think Brian's stuff is only when it affects him. him. Yeah. Okay. So you said it would affect other people, but there is you don't need the other people don't need to roll. I mean, if Brian was in the room; he could counter. Oh no, you're not a regular bard. Twenty-five. Other one. I don't know if you get counter song. You are. You're good. I don't believe I do. Uh, and that's all Yannick does, Matt. My uh, song makes you too angry to counter song. <laughs> Um, I attack hastily. Uh, 30. 30 hits. Hit possible crit. Yep. 39 to confirm the crit. You confirm. And 33 for my third attack. Uh, that hits. Okay. Actually, there is a small retcon. As you're slashing him, it's not green acre that comes out. It is blood. Okay. That is, he is bleeding. Okay. Yeah, I know we looked up and we or we did our research and we figure out what the one way to discern the difference is, and it's like lack of emotions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he probably doesn't. One. So he probably doesn't act like he's hurt. No, as you're stabbing him, and, he, and as you crit him, he's just he his body jerks in reaction to the impact, but there's no grunt of pain or cringe. Seventy six damage. Describe your kill. Um, just really efficient. So it's just like three quick jabs. Uh, to uh, like the solar plexus. Um, I'm assuming he's probably rough terrain. Yes. Okay. Um, Even as you kill him, he just crumples to the ground, another cog in the wheel. Okay. Um, that's all I can do. Okay. Um, Uh, Brian, you are up. Uh, okay. So that is going to be up, and then that is two. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go. Uh, Uh, is it kind of considered rough terrain to get past Toivo, or am I just kind of stuck because Toivo squeezing? Uh, those areas are open, so he should be fine, right? I'm going to say you could move past him. You will be squeezing past him, though. So double movement. And the only reason you're able to move past him is because of the alcoves that he partially occupies. So 30 feet then would get me to there. Yep. And you said Matt looked injured? Yep. Yeah. He I'm still gonna, looks injured. I'm going to cast a, uh, a Cure Moderate on Matt. Matt Keel, that's a good roll. 19. That is. That's not bad. 
Um, and then as a uh, swift action, I'm going to burn a mythic point. And uh, well, is is anyone in front of a bad guy? I can only kind of see, like, I can see a part of a token there. This person is slumped on the ground, appears to be dead. Okay. Uh, and there wasn't anyone up here? Or is that a, a alcove? Alcove. Okay, so never mind then. I'm going to not spend a mythic point then, and I'm going to be done. Nick? Uh, Nick's going to reach into his bag and throw an alchemist fire at the dude on the far side. All right, make an attack roll. Take my minus four. Does a 19 hit a touch? It does. Roll your al alchemist fire damage. One point of damage. Welcome back, Nick. Welcome back. <laughs> hey, but he's on fire. He is on fire. Does that end your turn, Nick? Um, yeah, because I can't really, I don't think I can command the cat to move up because I don't think he has enough to move. Oh, he's hasted. The cat could move up to the dead corpse, right? And fill that area. Yes. I will spend a mythic point to have the cat Large. move up. It would be 50 feet of movement to get where the corpse is. Which, with your haste, you should easily be able to do that. Yeah. And that you have enough to make an attack, do you not? Uh, I don't think the cat... Oh, if he his can normal... move and attack. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. He just does take penalties from squeezing. It's a minus four. All right. Twenty eight to bite. Chew bite. Seventeen points of bite damage. Oh, actually, that would be higher because of Matt, uh, Brian's song. That would be the plus one, two higher, plus one higher because it's plus two strength. So plus one is more damage. So it's eighteen so damage. Eight, eighteen. Okay. Uh, his so is a plus, plus four, four strength. strength. Oh, okay. So night. It would be nineteen. That's what I thought, but I. Okay. And then I get the. Uh, the grab ability, yes. Yep. So you can make a grapple check. This guy is not known for his uh, right. his grappling ability in life. What? Yeah. That's going to change it to a nineteen because of his abilities and feats. So twenty six to grab. You just needed to not roll a one on that. Okay. He bites. He is grappled. Hold on. All right. That is the end of Nick's turn. Nick and Toivo. No, just Nick, because I used the mythic point to make him move and attack. Toivo okay, Toivo. No, it's Toivo. That's why I did it. Because then Toivo would get a full round. So Co Toivo can um maintain the grapple. Uh if he does, he has a plus five to that roll. 
Um, or he can or, do the Jack special drop attack. Drop attack. Grab, drop attack. Grab, That's what he's going to do. Yeah. Well, every time he maintains the grapple, he does just does. He can choose to do extra damage, right? Maintaining the grapple is a standard action. Oh, so he might as well just full round, drop yeah. attack, and just full round. Yeah, he's just going to pull. Yeah. Round. Actually, I think. Because you made. Oh, okay. Um. So you can also, since you begin your turn uh, grappling him, you can you can make a rake attack against him. Uh, Toivo's rake attacks. Okay. Sounds good. Then I will also do the rake, I'll add the rake attack to the damage at the end. So, fight. 15? Or 20, I mean? Uh, 20 hits Yannick. Eighteen claw, fifteen Misses. claw. Look at all those bad rolls. Misses. But you said he automatically gets the rake. Yeah. And then that would be a. Do you want me to roll separately? Yes, because they're attack rolls. Still, you still have to roll attacks for them. Rake is an attack roll. It's an extra attack you get when you are the, the grappler, as if you start your turn grappling or you maintain a grapple. Yeah, for my thing, it says my rake automatically goes off if I hit my bite and cl two claws. I don't get... That's Ren. Did I write it down wrong? He's a big cat, right? Yeah. He could have Ren and Rake. I might have just looked up the wrong rules. A creature with a special attack gains extra natural attacks under certain conditions, typically when it he grapples does get its rank. Foe. In addition to all options available to all grapplers, a monster with the rake ability gains two free claw attacks that can it can use only against a grappled foe. This the bonus and damage caused by the attacks is included in the creature's description. A monster with the rake ability must begin its turn already grappling to use its rake. You can't begin a grapple and rake in the same turn. So we've been using the rules as rend, or I've been using the rules as rend the whole time, not as rake. The more you learn. That's why I'm you here, learn. you guys. So it's based on your claw base attack? Or your claw yes. attack? Okay. As now he's going to kick Yannick's guts out. All right. So there's two more claw, two more attacks from the rake. You said. Yes. Two claws. Eighteen and twenty. Twenty hits. Eighteen. Well, this would have been when he was grappled, so his AC is lower. So the eighteen would hit. Okay. So two claws and a bite all hit. Yes. Now, do you want Which me to might... roll the damage all together? Yeah. One die eight. No, this guy has blood and guts. Fifty three damage. You see them. They're plainly apparent on the floor, all around Toivo and in his fur. But uh, he is still moving. So that's the thing where the cat grabs it and they start kicking with the hind legs, is what we're, what we're yes. saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the cats do. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what Rake is. Yep. Does that end Toivo's turn? Yeah, yeah, it does. This is, this is going to probably kill Yannick, what he's about to do. But you see he has this beautiful silver crossbow. He raises it up and he shoots at Toivo. You get an attack of opportunity.
No, not one. Mm. I use I use my reroll. Oh, nice. all right. Twenty-two. Uh that hits. He he For has fifteen points of damage. Total. What's that? Uh, he is dead. Okay. I didn't like getting vomited on. Let you know that as a fact. <laughs> Press the digitation. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of that combat. They do have some items that appears like you could take. Um, we are at 10 just past time. Okay. Do you guys want to get the items, identify the items, see what's in the next room, or do you want to save that for the next the next game? I think let's save it for the next game. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then that is where we will pick up next time. Sounds Sweet. good. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out here. We're going to definitely ready right on out. Where are we going to go? Bum, bum, bum. You know we're doing D and D, right? So let's do. We're we're doing role playing. Oh, they're on they're on break. That's okay. That's okay. We're gonna raid them anyhow. We're gonna raid our friends over at Dungeon Scholars. We haven't raided over there for a while. So we're gonna go raid on over to our friends at Dungeon Scholars. All the writers, authors, they're doing villains wanted. So the bad guys are the characters, and they're trying to become good guys. Essentially is the the concept of the story so um so come along with us use my rate emotes your rate emotes anyone's rate emotes i will be back tomorrow but in the evening we're going to be doing dead by daylight tomorrow a uh, little community gaming so if you play dead by daylight or you like hanging out for that come and join us uh, i'll be doing a few rounds of killer until we find some people that want to join me and then we'll switch over to survive with friends uh uh you know and we'll all play as survivors together and die mutually exclusively together as a group so that'll be tomorrow and then skull and bones friday guys and of course monday is the day after wrestlemania we'll be joined by ring of honor tag team champion former tag team champion the beer city bruiser and the co-host of uh the darkness radio so he's going to be joining us for the podcast on monday so make sure to join us for all of those things um and of course thank you to matt brian and our guest gm andrew for being here tonight. I appreciate you guys so very much. Next week, we're gonna have a double header of role playing. We're gonna have the Movember RPG. Everybody who donated to Stephen the Sharks Movember is gonna be doing an RPG on Wednesday, and that's gonna be followed up on Thursday by uh by uh the Claimers Conquest RPG. So we're gonna get a we're gonna get a double dose of Andrew next week, uh, along with myself, Rolana Halo. Uh we'll all be there for that, and then of course. For the Movember thing, Bentley, Pixel, Nick, Steve and the Shark, and maybe Octavius? We don't know. So we'll see you guys later. Have a good one and take care.